We are live. Nice. So happy Whiskey Wednesday. We're trying something different. We're going to be doing this on YouTube, obviously, because you are here, and uh, we're probably going to try to get back to Facebook at some point. But we're doing this just because Facebook's been down all day, and we kind of tried to wait it out, but it didn't really work. So uh, tonight we're going to have Dustin on, and he brought something special. We'll get into that later. And it's going to be an interesting uh, conversation as, you know, per usual, but tonight's topic, which you're never going to guess it is, how to be a book on water, and I know when Steve told me that the first time, I had no idea what he meant. I don't either. So, um, we'll and, get to it. <laughs> but, right, we're going to try to find this here first, so everyone on YouTube, if you guys are coming in live, uh, share this somehow, we're going to try to make this work, because <laughs> this is a new one for us. Yes. So, why don't you guys talk for a minute? Dustin, you finding this yet? Yeah, I found it. I've copied the link I'm going through and sharing to the various pages. And, okay. Um, I'll share it on the <clears throat> actual podcast Facebook page as well. Yeah, if you guys are tuning in right now, bear with us. If you guys are tuning in after the fact, you got to check out the YouTube video. Fast forward a little bit here. Skip ahead so we can figure this out. This is our first time doing YouTube. Live. We don't. We, we want to keep the uh, the element of, of uh, conversation if we can. So this will be very interesting to say. It is going to be interesting. Can you pull it up on yours. Yeah. I don't even have to download. There we go. I don't even download on the iPad at this point. Yeah, this isn't the best user friendly. No. YouTube. <laughs> no. Just uh, FYI. Um, I see us. Yeah. We're right there. <laughs> right there. Share. <laughs> um, copy link. You're doing this, Dustin? Yeah. This is interesting. This is a fun learning experience, if you want to call it that, everyone. <laughs> groups, groups, groups. Luke, something went wrong with getting it fixed as soon as we can. Oh, Jesus. That's the whole thing. Well. That's the whole thing. <laughs> See if that posts. I'm going to pour myself a glass. This is interesting. This is going to be a fun night, boys and girls. <laughs> uh, I'm going to need a glass of aloe vera. No. I don't know if I'm wondering. Huh? You dudes hanging out, messing on iPads and stuff. <laughs> cool. So let me share on my personal page, but not to groups. I see we just get started. Yeah, okay. that's fine. I can do this. That's fine. And then as we're talking, I might look down and try to share it again on here, see if anything works. In fact, you said it's shared it to your personal. Yeah, so I've saved it, shared it on my personal page, but hasn't let me. Let me see if I can post it on the uh, podcast page. I'm doing it right now. Loading? Nope. Just kidding. I posted it on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I don't know how that's gonna do, but that's fine. It's all about testing it out, I suppose. There we go. All right, I'm gonna share this on uh, a couple of the uh, groups here. Share to a page. Let's see you try it on once on the line of duty cigars. See if it goes through here. It is not. Technology, gotta love it. That'll happen, I guess. Yeah, I've done all I can do. <laughs> Alright, let's try it. Alright. Alright, who's on this? Anyone? Just me? Cool. Uh, you can say on there. Do it. Right. Well, we got 
someone, yeah. Michael. Yeah. yeah. What's up, Michael? Hey, Michael. Thanks for tuning in. You never watched us. We're trying YouTube Live out for the first time. Um, we normally do Facebook Live, but this is the Bourbon Diaz podcast. Um, if you like drinking whiskey, if you like smoking cigars, tell us what you like, what your favorites are, and uh, we'll get to it as we get into our discussion tonight. All right. So I say we get uh, get rolling. Are you ready to do this? Yeah, we're rolling. Yep. Good night, nice session. Let's do it, Lars. Lars. Moving foot, actually. Mm-hmm. I think we lost Michael. There's three people and all three of us are on, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good run. It's a good run on last Good day. job, Michael. Alright. You're a Vegas fan. Let's ready? Yeah. Happy Whiskey Wednesday, everyone. That was an amazing ring. It was nice. On an empty glass. It drained forever. I can still hear it through the hills. It's done. It's it's done. Midwestern oh, Ohio. Fucking look at <laughs> Anyways. Thank you for tuning in tonight. I'm Jake Sanders, along with Steve Crane, and we make up the Bourbon and BS Podcast. This is our episode, well, 58th episode, and um, if you've never tuned in, we're, uh, we talk about whiskey, we talk about cigars, and we have a life topic m- mingled in there, and there's a lot of pretty interesting conversations that come up out of that, and basically our point is, is that we want to show the world the atmosphere of what a cigar shop is and what it can be in the community behind it. So, again, thank you for tuning in. Tonight we're going to be talking about how to be a duck on water. The first time that Steve told me this, which was yesterday, was I had no idea what he meant and he explained it to me. And we'll get into that a little bit later, but we're drinking Old Ezra 7-Year Barrel Strength, which is, I've tried it and Dustin has it, and that's why he brought it. So. Thank you, Dustin, for being on tonight um, and bringing that bottle. Um, It's definitely delicious, and we'll get into that. And we're also smoking the Tatawahe uh, Veracu? Veracu? Veracu. Veracu. Yeah. And uh, that's pretty new, right, Steve? No, I'll I'll go into that a little bit. It's actually kind of a re-release in a sense. Okay. Very cool. Well... Um, I know a lot of people like Tatawahe's, and this is an interesting cigar, um, definitely for their brand. But thank you, Tinderbox at Easton, our main sponsor tonight, for providing the Tatawahe Veracu. Thank you, Altidus Cigar Company, for always providing the second cigar of the evening for our podcast, which tonight is going to be the Romeo San Andreas. And thank you, Via Cigar Company, Brian and Steve, you make an awesome cigar. There's always some floating around the garage, and we normally have it as our third cigar, so yeah, um, it's always fun, so thank you guys. And uh, don't forget about the Smoking Tent event, but if you're listening to this, it's probably already happening. So. If you listen to the audio, it is, but if you guys are <laughs> catching us tonight, hopefully you guys are looking forward to it. Unfortunately, we are sold out. Uh, which is fantastic. I'm still uh, trying to share this on our Facebook pages to, <laughs> to get as many people directed over to the YouTube uh, video, and hopefully if this works out, we actually can kind of stick with this, but we'll see. Yeah, our audio listeners, we're trying out YouTube Live tonight because uh, Facebook has pretty much been down all day. We almost had it for a second, but... Um, Probably the most boring, like, first two minutes of a YouTube video. Oh, yeah. Just just sitting there fucking around with it. So oh, yeah. So we, will, uh, we hope that you see. stuck around, and I hope yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that you enjoyed this. So, yeah. So, what's up, Dustin? Not a lot. I I'm was uh, shooting for uh, triple-digit views here. Triple-digit views on the first triple, time triple, ever. Triple-digit triple views. YouTube edition of the podcast. Screw right here. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... Thank you, Dustin, again, for bringing the old Ezra 7 year yeah, man. And uh, I think Steve and I were talking last time you were on here. It was your birthday, right? In December? Uh, yeah. Um, no, I was on for the, uh, the 52nd, the one year. Uh, that's right. That's before right. that, it was, I think, my birthday. That's and, very nice. Uh, surprise visit from uh, Bourbon Claus. Oh, thanks, Michael, for sharing that to Cleveland Bourbon Co op. That's awesome. Sweet. Yeah, man. Um, I didn't know, I mean, we didn't know that you were part of that group, but that's awesome. Uh, Dustin's part of Columbus Bourbon Club. I used to be. Um, I don't know if Steve is anymore. I don't uh, think you're ever really, Columbus Bourbon Club, it's, they do like yeah, well, a lot I of raffles. Don't know anymore. Do a lot of raffles yeah, and stuff. I lost my chat when did this, it's cool. Yeah. YouTube's I, new, right? I, think, I don't know if it's going to catch on. It's a lot nicer on the iPad than my iPhone, I'll yeah, tell you that yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. But, yeah. I think it's a lot more... I'm gonna say, as far as the video goes, 
it's a little more, I'm saying, reactive. Because you know how Facebook can be a lot yeah. more delayed. Yeah. Facebook or YouTube allows you to kind of catch up. And, you know, when you join in, you can catch up and basically start wherever. Whereas Facebook Live, you start with wherever you joined in. At. That's true. That's true. But the, I think the, the user, usability, user friendliness isn't quite to where Facebook is. It's like TiVo for live video. Sure. <laughs> On your phone. Yeah. It's but it's I mean it's still kinda cool. Um Exactly. The I think the, the live chat you have to really kinda like select it, go into it in order to bring it up. Yeah. But uh Well yeah, again, it's not for everything. Yeah, exactly. Thank you everyone for tuning in and if you would be so kind to share this to your friends that are also that love cigars and just enjoy a video. Yeah, you know, see, see the comments come up on the left side. Yeah, <laughs> I see that. Oh, there they go. Away. But uh, it's fair. Yeah, <laughs> I don't even know what I was saying anymore. But Sorry, anyways, you really your you're good. Um, anything else you want to add, Steve? No. We have our smoking tent event on Friday, which is going to be amazing. Which again, for our audio listeners, you'll that's probably happening right now. So <laughs> yep. if you're listening. Yeah. Um, but we're going to have a blast. And we, we still hope that you are coming to Fido and hanging out with us. Yeah. All right. I'm back. You're back. I'm signed in on YouTube under you because I don't know my password and it's on my phone, but you're still logged into this one. So if I'm chatting on here, it's, uh, it's me. talking. Perfect. So I'm going to say some fucked up shit. I'm going to just know. stay off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to, like, I don't, I, I can go on. I don't know how to, I don't know. This, this is fun. Good. We're fucking six minutes into this. It's and we're still figuring it out. So. It's amazing. Anyways, let's just get this started here. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, before we get into the whiskey, can you explain to us, Steve, please, what the hell does how to be a duck on water mean? I, I think we should save it for the subject part. But, but it's enticing for the viewership here. I feel like it's, it's more, it, it's better as a buildup. But, uh, yeah. so... So the saying is, so that you guys can all kind of frame your, your conversation, especially Dustin, uh, who just walked in the, the whole thing tonight as the guest. He had no idea. No idea my entire water. conversation over a different topic. It's like, amazing. I heard right. how to be a duck on water. Excuse me, come again? All right. So, it's better when Dustin has to improvise. How to be a duck on water. The overall metaphor is, and, and, and I'll leave it at, at that if that's all right. Yeah. So the overall yeah. metaphor is that when you look at a duck on water, going across like a pond or, or a lake or what have you, right? It's very like, picture a, a very calm pond. And this duck is just scooting across there, just kind of floating, gliding even, if you will, like there's a, a slight current. So everything's very peaceful, everything seems to be in order, everything seems very, very easy. The, the different, you yeah, know, see, Kylie's already on it, and I like that she's found us on this, thank you, Kylie. But the difference is, if you look below the water, so what's actually happening, whatever, the, the appearance is so smooth and everything else, but under the water, those legs are just kicking, 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 kicking. I mean, they're going nuts. I mean, it's just chaos underneath that water to make the top of that. What you are seeing, the visual of it, the show, is just smooth gliding across the water. So that's the metaphor. Very nice. All right. Very well put. Gotcha. I like it. Yeah. yeah. So getting started with the whiskey tonight, again, thank you, Dustin, for providing the Old Ezra Seven Year Barrel Strength. It's, uh, when did you, op you open it last week, right? Um, yeah, I think it was last week. Yeah. Um, Cause I, you were wondering what to open, and I was like, open it, open it, open it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was debating between a, a couple, a few different options, and, uh, I know you had always talked about how good it was, and a few other people that have tried it have all raved about it, and so I was like, you know what, what the hell. Yeah. Crack it open, pour a glass, I have one glass, it's, it's. Pretty, pretty damn good. You think it's a little opened up, you know, since you've mm -hmm. had it over, you know, for a week's time? I yeah. only had one pour out of it. See, my my first and only bottle that I had didn't last but a week, so. Mm. It's kind Why of is that? Well, one, I was so excited about it that the first night I had it, I probably drank a quarter of it. And then I wanted everyone else to try it, so I brought it to the cigar shop and it was gone. I got you. That's normally what happens. I'm a very giving man. Awkward silence. <laughs> Awkward silence. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I, I, um, I don't. I don't know that it opened up more. <laughs> I also don't think I've drank enough out of it to really give it more space to open up. Yeah. Especially after only a week. That's a good point. What does that mean, Dustin? Um, so what that means is obviously the more you drink out of the bottle, the more empty space there is, or the more oxygen 
there is that allows the whiskey to kind of open up in the aromas and yeah. the tasting notes and um, think of it like uh, like a flower really um, you know the more it grows it it starts as a small bulb yeah it's more concentrated as time goes on it opens up it becomes more fuller flower and kind of you get more I don't want to say crevices but gaps in it um, so the whiskey it kind of does the same thing where it opens up but it opens up new areas for new flavors new tastes yeah. and can hit different parts of your palate and um, obviously depending on how much space or how much of the bottle is left um, will depend on one how much oxygen there is for it to open up into uh, the longer you leave it in the bottle with uh, you know I want to say a somewhat larger space. Yeah. I would say probably you know a quarter of the bottle missing mm -hmm. would give it adequate enough space to open up more over time. Yeah. Um, but obviously, the longer you let it sit, the more it will open up. Yeah. Um, it could completely change the whiskey. It could not change it much at all. Um, it just it, it's just like the aging process in a barrel. It's it's kind of a, a roulette. Yeah. I normally say that um, where if. Uh, our friend, like Brad Grimsey at the cigar shop, he normally says like three fingers worth. Like if you stack your three fingers up against the side of the bottle, and that's when normally like three try fingers is three on the left, three on the right. Yeah, exactly. He <laughs> this whole hand and he spreads the fingers. But um, <laughs> no, but I think that's where um, you're talking about the good things about having it open up and like where you should have the whiskey. You said you didn't drink enough out of it to open. I only up. had one pour. Yeah, but if you drink it down to like say three fingers worth. I think it sometimes has a negative effect. Like taking three fingers out of it? No, or like till there's only three of the fingers left. Till there's only three I think, fingers left. I think that very well could be um, a negative. It could be either way. It could be negative, obviously, the longer you let it go mm -hmm. um, because you're allowing too much oxygen to get to it. It's uh, kind of the same as adding um, a drop or two drops of water or yeah. an ice cube to it. Uh, it's going to change the the flavor of it is going to expand it a little bit. Um, this just kind of does it in a somewhat different form, just yeah. because it's just simply air. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. I wanted I wanted the you know viewers and listeners to know what that meant because I know some people don't know all of our lingo. Um, but so Old Ezra seven year barrel strength. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit history behind where it comes from and everything like that. So Old Ezra seven year is a barrel strength product at 117 proof. Um, there used to be an old Ezra 7, and I believe that was in the late 90s, early 2000s, and it's still around sometimes, you can find it, um, but they reintroduced this in 2018, and it comes from Lux Road Distillery, um, which was originally um, in Luxco, I'm sorry, Luxco in St. Louis, Missouri. And um, it was formerly the David Sherman Company that was renamed in 2006. But um, this is the same people that bring you Rebel Yell, regular Ezra Brooks, um, David Nicholson, and then even the people, the big bourbon collectors out there, Blood Oath. Um, so there's a lot of different brands that are associated with this, which is, I, I think, pretty cool. Um, what's interesting is that um, Luxco was another outsourced distillery. It never distilled any of its own products after it had bought the, um, the Hoffman distillery that was actually based out of Lawrenceburg, Kentucky. Um, but, and what I mean by that is, is um, Luxco bought the rights to the name of the whiskey. Luxco? Yeah, Luxco based out of St. Louis. Yeah. But in I believe 2018, they built their own distillery, and you guessed it, Bardstown, Kentucky. Is it Bardstown? Yeah. So I was thinking Bardstown a little I couldn't remember which one it was. Yeah, so they built their own distillery, and, and we talked about this last week um, with the whole branding thing and some of the distilleries outsourcing and the reason why they do it, and basically it is to raise funds and then kind of converge towards a, a uh, product of their own distillate, right? I think it's a, a means to kind of uh, fill the void, or fill, the, fill yeah. the gap because of the uh, the aging process. It's a faster return. Yeah, oh, absolutely. So they can release a product of sorts until um, their own product is released. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of distillers that do vodkas or gins just to kind of help fill in 
some uh, source of your MGP. Yeah. So um, this is actually not an MGP product. There's a really, really heavy. For once. Yeah, I know. For right? once, yeah. <laughs> um, Good. It's nice actually, yeah, exactly. It's actually, it's heavily rumored that this comes out of Heaven Hill, which I think is pretty cool. It's, I believe, 78% corn. Um, and let me grab it. Yeah, 78% corn, 12% malted barley, and 10% rye. At 40 to 45 bucks a bottle, high retail, I think this is a massive flavor bomb, and it's amazing. I can't. I, I like it. Yeah, I don't think you can really go wrong with it. I wish that um, when I finally saw it in you know a local liquor store, that I would have bought three or four of them, but I didn't because I figured that. It would be there because this one here. Yeah, I mean they had like two cases of it, and I mm -hmm. went in probably I bought it Friday on a whim. We just went in the liquor store, Lish and I did. Yeah. Found it. I was like, holy crap! I've been looking for this. Found it. Was so excited. Bought it. And they had two cases of it, and by Monday it was gone. So, I mean that. I love the look of this too, mm -hmm. compared to like the other old old Ezra's. Yeah, they completely changed the bottle. It's almost like a Weller antique bottle, but a little fatter. Um, I mean, like with the neck polish there. Like oh this. yeah, I like this better than. I mean, it's because doesn't doesn't the uh, Weller like has a little bit of a yeah, it's bulge got a the, the body of it too. Yeah, it's I just love the label on this. I mean, they did a nice oh, yeah. job. Really like a, a flat. Uh, there's a little bit of embossment and everything on there, um, but it's I like a that flat they, um, feel to it. Even the gold is is like a flat. It's all matte, yeah. which is nice, but it still has that kind of sheen to it. So it definitely makes it look like a higher end whiskey. Give it a uh, somewhat Art Deco type look. Yeah. yeah, like the font. Yeah, like the yeah. font, the design, like the contrast of the black and the, the gold. Um, there's, I think, a slight maroon in it, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, very, very good, though. This is a, like I said, it's a flavor bomb for 40, 45 bucks. It's got a lot to it, yeah. In seven years, I mean, at 117 proof, um, <laughs> it was so funny. We were talking about it before the podcast got started, and I was kind of like reading up on some different reviews. And the fact that most of the reviews that I saw, they the word surprising was in the the tasting notes. Surprising. Yeah, and it's like in my mind, it's like one, it's a barrel proof. It's seven years. Like, what what did you think it was going to be? Like, not a right. flavor bomb. Like, you, right. it's been seven years, and it's. I mean, you can see it's it's a deep, rich amber color. Um, it's not like a honey or kind of like uh, what we have seen, like especially that Toki that was that Japanese whiskey that was basically yellow. Yeah. Um, this is a deep, deep, rich bourbon and it, it definitely shows in the nose and the taste. The nose is filled with caramel, brown sugar, um, a really, really heavy sense of vanilla concentrate. And but the my weird note of the night and what it kind Sorry. of what it reminds me of is I don't know if you guys did this as a kid, but if you put like brown sugar in and you had uh, oatmeal packets, but you, you did like the apple and cinnamon oatmeal and then put like brown sugar on it. Don't think I did that. I just did the mix. Say that one more time. I added more brown sugar to it. So if you buy like the those oatmeal packets, I don't know what what's the oatmeal Quaker. brand. Yeah, Quaker. Yeah, Quaker oats or whatever. Yeah. yeah, Quaker oats. They had a they had a cinnamon apple oatmeal packet. Okay. And I love that as a kid. And even though that this doesn't have like any apple in it, it's just the cinnamon, the the brown sugar. I think the brown sugar is like the biggest note in this thing. And brown sugar. Yeah, brown sugar and a really heavily, if you think of direct vanilla concentrate, Yeah. that's that's what I get out of it. And okay. I think the taste reflects. I think I a weird note for you, but I think I told you about right, so we're eating first. Quaker oats, and then you're going to add in what now? <laughs> <laughs> what else is so for fucking breakfast? We're here? drinking. We're drinking Quaker oats. All right, we're drinking. No, I'm... I'm Picturing hey, breakfast. Hey, breakfast for dinner. I feel like I'm breakfast best meals. I agree, especially with this whiskey involved. Yeah, yeah. I put a drop of water in there. Yeah, it does a lot to it, man. Is that what you did? Yes. All right. So when I first opened it, I know Jake, you asked me what I thought, and the, the notes that uh, kind of first came to mind for me, a couple of them was banana, really, and praline pecan. Didn't you say that like not too long ago? Uh, that's exactly what I just said. 
You said when that. I first opened it. No, you said uh, not the banana, but the. the did you say that the, the dinner the other night? No. The um, the tasting. Didn't he say that? <laughs> With one of them, maybe. I think he, I thought you did. With the Kentucky no. spirit, you didn't say banana. No. I see trailing pecans. No. Okay. I saw. I think I've heard it too. So. Are you going back to the notes. What is this? Whoa. Yep. What are you yep. looking at? Here? He's looking at her text message, man. Yeah. <laughs> so I cracked open the bottle. It was about a week or so ago. And uh, Jake asked me what I thought. I said, uh, pack some heat for me on a 117, which he does. Some of this. Oh, so, okay. okay. So you, you said very toffee, toffee-like from what you remembered. Yeah. And I said, yeah, I get that. I said, toffee, banana, praline, pecan. Yeah. I don't know what praline, pecan means. You've never had a praline before? No. And so, I don't eat nuts, so. Oh, that's true. <laughs> so so that I'm sorry. That. Jeez. Why would you be sorry? Praline and pecans are awesome. Cool. I wouldn't know. I have no frame of reference, therefore you shouldn't feel sorry. A praline pecan is like a uh, kind of like a toffee caramel coated candy pecan. Pecan. Yeah. Yeah. That's the part I'm missing there. No the nut. The nut. Yeah. So we can <laughs> do that. Just, just do like a toffee. Nuts. Yeah. Sugar over nothing. Yeah. Just a ball of it. Yeah. Nothing in the middle. I think if you stuck brown sugar on your tongue, I think that's what this would taste like. And then dab a drop of vanilla concentrate. And alcohol. Yeah. And there you go. All right. So, coat a heat bar and brown sugar and dip it in alcohol. All right. Welcome, Greg Hoff. <laughs> Tune in here. That's nice, my buddy, Greg. All right, Greg. Very nice. I like this. We're, you know, we're, we're back to the, the, not that we're very advanced, we're back to like the humble beginnings here as far as the, the video part of it. But we're at, you know, cruising at nine, nine viewers right now. Which Woo! Is, not bad, just to direct. That's it really not that bad. It's direct. not that bad because the difference is, is that when we post it, like I posted it on like all the different, like not all of them, but like yeah. on five of the pages and my own and on the center box. The thing is, is that they don't get that. That especially if you're following the Bird and BS podcast, there's at least you know hundreds of people that will get a notification that we're going live on their phone. So yeah. even if they're not thinking about yeah. it, so now you have to actually be on Facebook, which is fucking up today. So they may not even be able to get on Facebook, and then you're on it. So thank you guys. Yes, thank you. And thank you, Michael, for again, like, you know, sharing that to got, yeah, Tyler Cleveland Mills, Bourbon Co op. Kylie. Um, it was Tyler's Kylie. birthday. Did you see that? I don't know. He's tuning in. Yes. Yeah, so we that's what we appreciate it. We hope you're enjoying the Camacho cigars your dad got, Matt. That was His uh, YouTube username, unless they just magically generate this, is 6UIT4RC4TFHS311. Tyler's? Yeah, can't you tell? No, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with this thing. I will say that this tastes like, I mean, again, it tastes like brown sugar. It's a great whiskey. Um, an empty glass, though, it's interesting. Um, you can mess with it, though, Steve, and just smell the empty glass. It, uh, is there anything that comes out before I say it? Any food flavors that you notice? I'm not good on the nose thing, man, when we're in a garage smoke, honestly. Yeah, that's I'm true. not. That's true. I'm not. There's a weird sense of, and I may be messing with the vanilla a little bit, but there's a weird sense of marshmallow in there. With like a marshmallow. With a in toasted marshmallow, you think? Yes. I got you. Like right before you put it on the s'mores. Mm. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, it is nice. Very nice. <laughs> no, I like it. Good. So now it's uh, marshmallow covered in brown sugar and topping and dipping in alcohol. You're making me hungry. And a bunch of pecans. <laughs> a, bunch of pecans. <laughs> a lot of nuts. Supposedly. A lot of nuts. <laughs> oh. uh, nuts around the table. Yeah. <laughs> before before we move on, did we haven't really talked about the whole tasting for your birthday? Uh, yeah. We didn't. You know, I, I thought you'd time. be all over that, but uh, I, I want to share. Like we talked about, I think the last Wednesday that we were going to do it. Yeah. Um, we, we posted some pictures on there. There's some people that. Uh, you know, there was one person coming out of there um, that was in the dinner before us, or in the tasting before us, that asked if we were going to go live in there, which would have been sweet, but obviously I think that's poor, poor manners just to uh, interrupt a guy that's been the master distiller and I agree. distilling for 38 years. But, I agree. Um, no, it was a very cool experience, but uh, we're happy we could do it. But we got to meet Eddie Russell yeah. and uh, taste some of our favorites and some new stuff, at least for me, some new stuff. Uh, very cool place, Basso. In yeah, Dublin. It's like a root. It's a rooftop bar, uh, new part of Dublin, Ohio. We, uh, I was impressed with it. Oh, absolutely. So uh, it was a. They, they put on a killer event. We lucked out because it was uh, ten thirty. 
Yeah. Uh, what's that? Yeah. Yeah. 10, 10, 10, 10 o'clock. We well, we went the full two hours where I think they were an hour and a half or so, right? Yeah. 6.30 to 8. They were like to 8 to an hour and a half. Dude, we didn't get out there until like 12.30. Yeah, like he definitely spent some extra time with us. Which was yeah, cool. I mean, they even said it was cool because he got to actually sit down with us and mm -hmm. it was just kind of hanging out and, and talking. So it was, I thought it was very cool. Everyone kind of had, you know, Dustin had good questions. Jake had good conversation with him. I, I felt like I was able to ask some questions that I had been wanting to, and, and that we had actually talked about on the podcast before. Here's the thing that's interesting about you, Steve, is even if you don't feel like you're in your element, you always seem to have like the best questions. <laughs> well, that's, I take that as a huge compliment. Because, um, like, we're, we're in a room full of, you know, us, like, amateur enthusiasts, and then we have, like, three what looks like pretty heavily bartenders, bartenders yeah, that, industry, people, industry well. people, and then we have a couple next to us, and I, don't even, I think they were bartenders, too. They might have been, or they might have, yeah, I don't know. Or one of them was. But anyways, there was only, like, what's that? I mean, that's... There was, like, ten people. people. One of the guys worked for a local distillery. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think he was at uh, Midwest. Mm. That could have been. I think that's what he said. I Which is OIO. Right, that, that's now Midwest Spirits. Did they change it? I think that's what happened. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Why do you say that, though? I mean, like, because, I mean, for the people that weren't there, like, I take out a huge compliment, and I'm, I'm not dwelling on that, but it's like, what, what, was, it about, what was it about the questions I had? Because, for them? because I think it's something that when you get into these these zones with these opportunities with people that you really want to pick their brains, uh, I feel a lot of times, myself included, there's a lot of people that just don't know how to form questions or they don't know what to ask. They don't want to, they don't want to sound stupid. You know what yeah. I mean? And, and I wasn't really going in there with premeditated questions. It was just as, as the other ones, like conversation was going. That's how I kind of addressed it. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think I didn't even, I think I maybe had one question, but it's kind of like, you're able to, you know, see and canvas the room and stuff and like get your own experience out of it. Sure, sure. But there was some, you know, I'm like sitting behind Steve and Dustin. I'm kind of like almost like fanboying where I'm not like, I, I'm not thinking anything other than what's coming out of his mouth. You know what I mean? You're like, taking it in. Yeah. Like, in fact, that earlier in the, the, the tasting, you were like, what do you think, Steve? And I'm like, ah. I was, I was in that mode where I'm just kind of taking all that and I'm like, yeah, no, no you, you guys already said exactly how I think this, this kind of takes yeah. Where Dustin doesn't even have a fucking problem because he always no, like, just, like, like, yeah. just yeah. goes with like yeah. notes and I'm like, yeah. okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm sitting over here like, uh, I don't even know because I you're a master distiller and I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Eddie. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Touch you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Steve, Steve's the one that got to stay closest to him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, but so my question is, that, you know, because I think we've talked about it before, and the way I framed my question, uh, the initial one, if I recall correctly, was, um, you know, because everyone talks about this when we're doing these, the, the bourbon side of it, and, and the most common discu discussion is rick houses, the barrels, yeah. the, you know, the uh, how, where in the, the rick house, how long they, they, they hold it in the barrels, all these processes. And it's almost like when you do a tour of the, the distilleries, the two that I did, and the one real one, like Willett was the only one that I went through, but it's one of those things where you, you go through it and they're, they're showing you these huge vats of the, the mash. Yeah. And it's, it's like, yeah, you taste it, it's super sour, that's why it's, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then it's like, cool, where are the barrels? And it's like, everyone's like ready to like, yeah. it's like, do you just want to go to the, the tape? The, we'll go to the bar. Yeah. Or do you want to actually like see it? But the one step I feel like that you never really get to see it, you know, that's where, you know, I actually uh, explained it, I think, in a sense, that coming from, I, I mentioned briefly that it was coming from the tobacco side. That's of the exactly what you said. And yeah. it was like, you know, my question was from the very beginning, how important is it, are you, you know, as far as the grains, the corn, the yeah. rye, the barley, and all that stuff. Um, and, and I liked his answer, you know, he said that his, his dad, Jimmy, said that, uh, you know, basically, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to. I'll paraphrase him, but it was like every step of the way. So, yeah. you know, everything from the the, the ingredients, obviously, mm -hmm. is just as important as the barrels, just as important as the the mash bill, just as important as you know every yeah. step. There's not one step necessarily the way he made it sound that was more important than than the other. Yeah. It is a it is a recipe from start to finish. Yeah, start to finish. So, uh, but he said something like I learned, uh, um, and we all kind of heard this is. You know, they've been farming using the same corn farmer for like 50 some years. Right. Yeah. You know, you're talking about a couple generations there. And that was really interesting. So, I mean, there's this, this trust, there's a bond there 
that you know this, the farmer knows that you know not only do they have pride in their their crop, but the same in their farms. But they actually do re re respect the relationship because that's how business is done. Yeah, and I like that. It's very very traditional, old school, if you will. Um, and I also like the fact that they uh, that he trained us with the. Or, or taught us the, the microwave test, which I would have never guessed. Yeah, that was interesting never on the yeah. corn. Yeah, yeah. He explained that. Eddie was explaining how they test the corn and kind of their age-old way of doing it. Um, obviously, when microwaves finally came out, um, yeah. they, uh, you know, because Jimmy's been doing this for almost 65 years um, as a master distiller, pretty much, and or as, you know, pretty much the head of the distillery yeah but um so he was explaining that to test corn that if if it's good corn that it'll basically like pop like a regular like piece of popcorn right yeah yeah and then if uh and then if it's not it actually like kind of turns like black and it, right no you get this uh musky, musky smell yeah. so it, it almost like accelerates that so i mean when they're looking at it you know before i think it was all like you could actually like take a you know a couple handfuls you kind of like this it's cool. It's kind of like what I, I see uh, I've done, you know, but I mean, I've never been at the point where they're, they're just harvest. I've been there in Connecticut, but it's like when you see it where they actually are picking up the tobacco leaves, and sorry about the, the nasally sound of that, but, you know, they pick up the tobacco leaves and they're, they're smelling that in their face, you yeah. know, to, to smell. Mm -hmm. They can tell. Mm -hmm. If you know, so that's the same thing with the, the corn. I, I, I picture them basically taking a, a handful or, or two and just smelling that that corn before, yeah. you know, before the microwave test, so they yeah. can actually smell it at that point where it's it, it has a distinct aroma to it, and you can the microwave side of it is, is simply just to accelerate that, so it, it'll bring out that muskiness if there is a yeah. problem with it. Yep. But I mean, it sounds like it's it, once you have that relationship, that farmer's not going to bring bad corn to the table. They're not going to yeah. try to pass it off, or they're not going to try. It doesn't seem like they're going to. You have that relationship after five decades that you're not going to have this this side of it where they're going to try to sneak in a you know bad bad bush along with it, yeah. which is also interesting because he was saying that there was you know the stalk of corn, you know with the husk and everything. It sounds like theirs comes you know basically off the cob. Corn, yeah, it's just straight corn. corn. Yeah, <clears throat> he said uh, a lot of the distilleries, you know, not a lot, but there are some distilleries out there that just take everything, you know. Corn with the husks, the, the 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 stalks, the whole nine, and you know he said no. We make sure that our product is just pure, pure grain. Yeah. Pure corn, uh, which I thought was really cool, and it actually led into you know one of the other I think really mean interesting questions that you asked Steve was. Yeah. Uh, I know you've asked it on the podcast previously on previous episodes, but how much the uh, the weather how it affects crops like does it affect the productivity yeah. because no, that was, that's right that yeah. was yeah. part of the question yeah. so in like in, in the tobacco industry and I, I mean you can go into that more but the if they have a bad year in the crop you know it could it'll jeopardize it'll, it'll jeopardize the entire product yeah whereas uh, with with him uh, what Eddie was saying was you know they can store the corn for up to two years yeah so even if they do have a bad year it's not going to really hurt them because they already have stuff stored. Yeah, corn and, and grain stored already. One interesting com <laughs> the best conversation of the whole night was when you guys got on talking about whiskey labels and why rye labels were mostly green. Yeah, listen to this. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> and then the guy in the back was like freaking out because Dustin said it had to or was it you that it said it had to do with Christmas or was, was it me? Because it had the holiday Christmas. theory. It's a great theory. And then someone else had another theory. With the with green being like the as far as on the color wheel being like the opposite of red yeah one of the opposites of red yeah from a artisan standpoint but it still goes back to the Christmas yeah, thing yeah well it really just goes all the way back and it was funny because and you also said they did a one of their first rides was a Christmas rye and they actually put a red and green label on it yeah yeah which I always think like red and green color line is very common too. Yeah, like those two. absolutely. And then my theory was, you know, basically way more, in my opinion, practical and not as this kind of magical and, you know, like this theory. <laughs> That's like no this. fun. I was just like, no, because he, he had basically said that of mo most of, like, wild turkey and all that stuff, most of the, the bourbons and stuff were that, like, white, faded white, yellow, Red. reddish, and all that stuff. Yeah. And it's like, it's just like... I don't know why, it just seems like all of them are like that, and that's where I took it as like, 
it sounds like whoever came out with a, a very successful rye put the green label on there. Yeah. And that's what was selling. So everyone well, else put a green label on there because that's what equates to a popular rye, and that's what you do from a business standpoint. Well, and I was actually thinking that the green itself was green. Like I've always like if you actually well, you asked that or some, someone someone asked someone that. asked if the green itself was green yeah, yeah. So the, the guys across the well and Eddie it was funny because like he kind of corrected me but I could have sworn like if you look at the grain itself like it when it's milled up it actually has like a green tinge yeah, yeah, to it. no I'm not I'm just saying <laughs> I'm saying he corrected me on it but that's yeah. what that's what I thought like when you go to distilleries and see the grain and kind of their tour yeah it it to me I guess it. It just it has a green hue to it. That's interesting. But um, I think that conversation, and then the there was one more about. Um, oh no, no, I'm sorry. I was thinking about if I wouldn't have been like fanboying so much and just taking it all in. I would have actually you bring yourself as that. I would have actually. Right? I would yeah. have actually right. said to myself, "Well, there's like old Fitzgerald. There was like very, very old Fitzgerald." And all these really, really old um, bourbons and stuff that was coming out of uh, what? Or yeah, uh, Stutzel Weller. Yeah. All their bottles were green. Like it had green writing. It was white with green writing. Interesting. And if I would have been thinking, like I would have said it. But like, but like William Leroux Weller was red, and then Fitzgerald was green. So. And, uh, uh, Special Reserve is green. Right. So it's kind of interesting. And maybe that's why Weller Special Reserve is green because they're paying homage to the old bottles, you know? Could be. Yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of interesting to talk. But again, thank you guys for setting that up. And that, it, was a, it was a great birthday last week. That was fun. And hopefully it gets back to, you know, um, and, right? Yeah, it's and Demick, yeah. And, and Demick, um, who kind of put it all together. And I think this is, a, from what I understand, that was. Eddie Russell's only Ohio visit all, all year round. So that, yep. that's fantastic that we were able to, to be a part of that. So thank you. If you guys do tune in to YouTube, the podcast, whatever it might be, um, thank you for doing that. And, and if you guys do get a chance to, to go to something like that with Eddie Russell or anyone that's experienced, it was it was a really high-class uh, effort. And um, I'll even say with Vasa, I'll probably go back there sometime. I mean, it's on the other side of town. It's not really – it's just a really nice place. It was I wouldn't really go there. I mean, it was busy good. on, like, a Friday or Saturday. That's not really my scene. But, like – you know, we went out there on like a, a Thursday night or something like that. It was definitely a high class bar. It was very sure. cool. Like very high cool. class, like rooftop bar yeah. in Dublin, Ohio. It, it almost made you feel like I've never been to New York, but I guess that's what I can imagine. New York, it kind of like, had that obviously a higher class feel. Yeah. The patio was really cool, and they had like uh, the. The bubbles. Yeah, the infla- I don't know, say the infla- orbs domes. or the yeah, yeah the domes. like domes and stuff that had lights and stuff yeah. through. They had a space heater in there because it was cold out. Yeah. Um, I, I looked up their actual food menu and honestly, price wise, it's really not bad at all. It looks good. The yeah. little hors d'oeuvres were really really good. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't get out much if you guys have. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> where, where we do this. We yeah. went. We went we to public. This. So it was a slight upgrade from from my garage. So. <laughs> if, uh, you know, either way, either way works. You know, couldn't really tell the difference, to be honest with you. No, I mean, it's it, it was it was a lot better. It was a lot better. <laughs> yeah, it was great. I like my garage, but I used to, um, before yeah. we switch, because I do want to say we have the Patty's Day uh, parties coming up. We got the we mentioned the smoking tent event. Drink. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that's fine. But I'm saying um, we we got the the uh, smoking tent event on Friday night. That kind of leads into it, which. By the way, we kind of got it out of the way. So if you guys are going to the uh, Fado or the Smoking Tent event, uh, you know parties, um, we had a puker last night at the the Tinderbox. So Tuesday night leading into it, I feel like we got it out of the way. So hopefully that is like, you know, it's like when a groundhog, you know, if they see their shadow. If you get a puker on Tuesday of Patty's Day weekend, I feel like that's you know signs for a good safe Patty's Day party. I look at it this way. Does, does that? No, I totally agree. Like, does that mean? I don't know which is like if they see the shadow, is it there's early spring or is it they don't see the shadow? I think it's like if they see the shadow, it's early spring. Is don't right? think too hard. Just go off of instinct, Steve. My instinct is is that we had a puker in the shop last night. You guys were middle. way way too nice too. I like. Yeah, yeah, I mean, what are you gonna I, do? You I know. I, I I get it, but eh, I don't know. But the thing was is that that you were you heard Sarah come back in, right? Yeah. Where she was asking, so like, so he basically puked at our place. We had like Jake took the big 
chunks because I went next door to, to to find some stuff to like kind of big take, chunks. Well, to take care of the actual carpet underneath the, the chunks, right? And, yeah. and so I feel very lucky. That I was the thing. initial. See, here's what happened, Steve. Steve was going to do it. I knew you were going to do it. Yeah. And I kind of just improvised. You grabbed paper towels, and then yeah. I was like, you know, and then someone said you should probably get some baking soda or whatever to, like, soak it up. And so I went next door to Fido. They're a restaurant. They deal with this stuff. they got to be more prepared than we are for it. I didn't want you to mess up your BS sweatshirt last night. Yeah, who does? I said it's a limited edition. That was really what I was thinking about. I don't think it was. But anyways, <laughs> screw my dress pants. <laughs> I always buy more of those. Yeah. Try to find a BS hoodie on the shelf. They're one off, man. There you go. But um, the problem was is that he then, after he puked and sat there for a few minutes, turns out, so Sarah from Fado comes over and says, Hey, which was the one that puked? Because I think it's the same guy that I served earlier, and now he's back in Fado ordering a Long Island iced tea. And I was like, No, I mean, it was the person. I was like, No, you got to shut that down. And, uh, yeah, because I served him like a margarita earlier and he was asking me about like how much alcohol was in it and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, do you serve him chicken too? She's like, yeah, serve him chicken wings. How would you know? And I was like, just looked at her. And I was like, we know. How do you think we know? And that's what Jay cleaned up was chunks of chicken. Uh, see, the reason why I thought you guys were being too nice is because I was, I mean, you, you were answering some of his questions. He was just, I thought he was just like a chatty, a chatty kid, you know what I mean? No, I knew he was looking to get fucked up. Like because he was talking about like he'd been drinking. He oh, I just that turned, part. He just turned like twenty one in January. I wasn't a part of any of that. It's it was a Tuesday evening and he was drunk by five. Right. Which I mean I don't have any room to talk there. But um, and then he's talking about like well like Todd gave me the Romeo and Julieta Reserva last night and it was kind of light. Like what's gonna like really like you know what's gonna add a punch to this? And I said well I mean you could try the bully. And it has a little bit more flavor, yeah. but you know, it's had got a little bit more strength to it. And this you hear that all to this? <laughs> yeah. Paul Waller have you found YouTube yet? Because <laughs> exactly. The eighteen seventy five Romeo is so strong it made someone puke. Yeah, I mean that's not true. Yeah, it's it not was the true. alcohol and immaturity. Yep. He was just I don't know, he, I thought he was acting like a douche and I feel like if I would have had any other inclination I would have kicked his ass out, but moving on. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> Um, so before we switch over, because I, I, I brought some Irish because, you know, tis the season to be married. I'm going to switch this up. Over. We I'm did, but, uh, you know, I think this is good. And this is uh, close to 60%, so I don't think we should be killing this bottle in my Close opinion. to it, yeah, no. No, I'm done. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm done with it. It's a little... A little I'm moving on to Buffalo. Well, let's, before we do that, it, we got to have a little Irish. Yeah, that's true. All right. Um, we're doing the Tatawahe Veracru. And the Tatawahe Veracru is a... Veracruz. Veracruz. Yeah. Um, so this is something that was actually brought out uh, as a as a limited edition blend, I believe, in like 2007. But this is an Ecuadorian Habana wrapper covering uh, Nicaraguan tobacco. So basically the binder and filler are, are Nicaraguan. It's coming out. So, the, you know, everything I'm looking up here, and I, I had forgotten about this because this was actually before I really got into the industry. But this is going back to 2007 as a Veracruz line of the Red Label Havana 6. So this is the Havana 6. It's an offshoot, but it's, I think it's a little bolder. Um, and that's what this says, even, is that the original one was a modified that was amped up. So I do think this is a little bit more stout than the normal Havana 6, uh, which is that Red Label by Tatuaje. Oh, okay. I didn't know if you meant, like, a, you said Havana, right? So Not Cuban. That's what they call Havana 6. Got it. Yeah. I got it. It's a good cigar, different size. What is it? What's the size on this thing? Number nine is what they call it, but it's a uh, uh, four and a half by forty-nine. Yeah, four and a half by forty-nine. It's number nine for T Robusta, is what they're calling it. Cool. Forty-nine ring gauge is, is a little odd. It is. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a small cigar. There. It's a small cigar. I think it packs a punch though. Well, shit. I mean, like we've been talking and everything, but we're forty-five minutes into the actual recording, let alone you put this up before the, the video. So yeah. I mean, the thing burns nice. Yeah. Oh yeah, it burns really nice. Uh, I'd have to agree with Jake, though. It, it does have uh, <clears throat> a little bit of a punch to it. Um, I think it uh, kind of parallels the uh, old Ezra. It's, it's got a lot of flavor. Um, 
but it does pack that punch. I think they're sure. Yeah, I agree with you. I think they go together very well. Um, I agree. With the like the creaminess and that the oak and then the brown sugar, and then you have something that. I mean, what would you say, medium body, Steve? You know, this ain't full. I think medium plus for sure. Really? Yeah. Personally, it's I think medium plus. plus. I mean, I think it's full body, and I think it's a good cigar for someone that's looking to get into like a fuller body realm, but doesn't want that punch to it. Yeah. Because I, you know, this is actually, as I'm saying this, this is kind of a perfect cigar for me because the only cigars that I think that this kind of goes up against is like, well, Dustin has like a Mercy Lago at the table by Eric Espinosa. Mm-hmm. And then I'm always looking for a cigar that has like full flavor, but it's like medium body because I don't want like a huge head buzz. Yeah. Um, but I want to enjoy it. <clears throat> and most of the time when I get to the shop for my first cigar, um, I haven't eaten yet. So especially on Tuesdays and stuff, um, I want to try something that's got the got the flavor to it that I'm going to enjoy, that I'm going to relax to, while also working, but isn't going to like hit me over the head either. So I think this is a really good uh, change up for Tatawahe up against, you know, besides their basic line. I think if you uh, take a, a draw of the cigar and, you know, get the notes from that and then take a sip of the old Ezra, yeah. you really get a lot of that spice from, from the old Ezra. It pulls yeah. a lot of that out. But the, the sweetness from it, from that toffee and those, those notes that we, we pulled from it, yeah. kind of take away, mingle very well with the creaminess of the cigar. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they blend very well together. Um, it's a little bit of a, a heat bomb. Okay. But, but not anything crazy. You know, it's not our, uh, you know, backyard barbecue or leave with beef. No, it's not. At 98 degrees kind of explosion in your mouth, but it's that nice kind of spice and it doesn't sit. It doesn't really? sit around. Yeah, I didn't you don't have think it, so. I don't think it sits around very Which this very the long. cigar though the just together. But I just together. I think this counteracts the the or the whiskey the cigar counteracts the whiskey because How so? that seven that one seventeen proof, it's like sitting and it's dry out the the like the back of my throat. And then the cigar is actually so rich that it's actually adding like a, just like a creaminess and not a sharp. See, I get more of that cedary uh, sweetness from the cigar. In fact, going back and forth, um, I like the old Ezra 7, I do. But I mean, again, even with a little bit of water I put in there, drinking it on its own is a great sip, it's a great nightcap for me. I yeah. like it a lot. I'm looking at the cigar. I'm actually wanting to go back to the cigar because it's, it's, more, it's more pleasant. It's an overall, like the finish on it's nice, the retro yeah. panel's nice. It's got a very, very, um, I like Tatuajes. I think that the goal on a lot of theirs, and I'm not gonna speak for Pete Johnson or, or Don Pepin or anyone in the my father company, but I know the story that I've heard about the brown label. I think he does that, the Havana 6. I don't know if there's like this ode to you know, Don Pepin's Cuban roots or whatever, but I mean, I think they do a really good job with Nicaraguan tobacco, kind of getting some of those those notes that, I mean, this is certainly stronger than most of that Cuban tobacco that I brought back and I've smoked and, and you know, gifts and all that stuff, but uh, dude, I, I really like the, the, the flavor of this cigar, and it does pack a little bit of a punch. I kind of, you're... I want you guys to smoke the regular Havana 6. Then, oh, okay. We've got the we've got the other blend in a, in a small size as well. So okay. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to do a side by side sometime and, and see the difference. But uh, your cedar sweetness that you Get were talking that. about, I, yeah, I was I was trying to see I got that a little bit. I, I think when I said like a, a creaminess, it's kind of like a sweet creaminess. I mean, but you still get that kind of sweeter note, the right. cedar note right. from it. Um, so I was I was actually picking up on that too. Good. I like the aroma of the cigar. I will say that this goes, Buffalo Trace goes a lot better with this cigar. Yeah, I bet you. But, I bet you. But uh, I think the like the aftertaste of adding like a little bit of water, maybe more water than what you did, Steve, with uh, Old Ezra and the cigar, I think it's really good. Mm-hmm. Because so, it opens up the whiskey a lot yeah. more. Yeah, and you get those Actually, really just a little bit. Yeah, more. you get those really really heavy brown sugar notes and kind of my weird marshmallow thing going on. Yeah. And then you have like a rich creamy cigar that's not hitting you over the head. So and it's good construction. I don't see any cigars that are cracking. No, I mean it's not like it's a 
really, really cold night either, but I mean, there's no issues with the cigar. The band's awesome. I like the band, the fact that it's different from their regular, you know, orientation, if you will, like of what they do. So it, it is and it's not, because if you look at the primary band, the, the red band, so it's a red band, the Zazuaje name, uh, same layout as like the brown label, the black label and everything like that, but um, that band is actually still a little bit of that kind of flat finish, a little bit more matte, it's not very shiny. Now the Veracru, um band, Gosh. secondary band, is more heavy, like there's no embossment on the regular Tatawahe band. Right. But on the Veracru band, it is embossed, it's got a little sheen to it. Yeah. You hold it up to that light, you know, right there. Yeah. You've it's got, like, it, it, yeah, well, and just even the overall, like the red is a little different red. They did that with the, uh, the Petit Corona, the black label, the original size of that one, if you ever looked at that, the, the black label has a, a kind of a flat black, it's tough to differentiate from the brown, but then the, the original size, when he came out with that Corona Gorda, or no, yeah, Corona Gorda, it had a very similar band to this Veracru, and it oh, said okay. Tatuaje on it, so it was really, yeah, it's, it's interesting, but um, yeah, you're right, it does pop a lot more than the typical uh, Tatuajes. I'm getting your uh, medium plus here, because mm -hmm. I'm feeling mm -hmm. it. Um, and it's not because of the whiskey either, it's, it's the cigar. It feels I, like, I, I like the size. more towards the second half of the cigar. I like the size. Yeah, because I'm down to like maybe an inch, an inch and a quarter, and it's like I... Here's... Most people always ask like, well, so how do you... Like, what's a head buzz like off a cigar, right? Okay. Yeah. And what I've narrowed it down to is like, I feel it in my temples for some reason. Kind of like when you, you start feeling a little... It's eat, like it. tipsy. Like when I get yeah, it, up it, there too. it's like a no, it's not front. Mine's no, like I'm, I'm here. Oh, okay. Temples. Yeah, it's my yeah. yeah. It's exactly my temples, and it, it's not like a, it's not like a drunk buzz. It's just it, it. It's almost like on the verge of a headache, but it's not a headache. Right. And that's probably what happened to that kid last night in the shop. <laughs> I don't know what happened to that kid, man. <laughs> he was on a mission, and he I don't know. It, it was really I think good. he succeeded. Puking in public, yeah, he, he nailed it. You know what I mean? I mean, like, that's the way he acted. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, what do you think, Dustin? You like the pairing? You do, don't I, I do. I like the pairing. Um, I think the further you get into the cigar, that you get that more medium plus, a little more spice. Yeah. So it can kind of battle with the whiskey, but I think, um, you know, like, to Jake's point, when you add uh, a little water to it, kind of open it up some more and pull yeah. more of that sweetness out and kind of tame that 117, mm -hmm. it really uh, complements the cigar well. Sure. I love this comment. Jonathan Herring on, on YouTube, you know, of all things, that we're trying something different. He says, uh, love the YouTube option, better tell Joe Rogan to watch his back, which that's awesome to hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think we got a little ways to go. Yeah, um, but I like this. I mean, we'll see how it goes. And, and again, we didn't really prepare people for it, so <laughs> you know, I'm all for it. You guys need to tell us what you think. We don't want to go away because we're getting up to over 4,000 views on Facebook. Um, but yeah, we love feedback. If you like this format, if we think this is something that we can move to, we can just prepare and do a, a crap shoot, or possibly, honestly, we might uh, if we have enough upload speed, maybe get like Dustin's phone and my phone and, and do, a, do a double recording and yeah. see how it goes, but push people crazy. over to it and try crazy. to do a conversion episode, because I, I like YouTube, because that's where it's, and you know, it's, it's more of an open format, I feel like, so. And there are some people who don't have Facebook, my buddy Greg, who, who tuned in, he doesn't have Facebook. Yeah. So now he's, this is the first time he's actually gotten to watch the live. So, so it's Greg's fault. <laughs> sure. The first night that he's going to tune in is the night where that Facebook goes Is he still down. on as a question? Greg, you still on? You better chime in here. No, I haven't heard anything else. It's yeah. Greg's fault. Yeah. <laughs> it is a possibility of YouTube Live for future podcasts. So for our YouTube Live listeners, anybody new on here, um, to refrain from losing anything, we always try and save the podcast at least halfway through, and uh, then we start it up again. But that's... Yeah, the clock well. pulled out a year ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we did. So... I like the YouTube live, honestly. Yeah. I, I think it's something mm -hmm. that, that, you know, I do like the format, even looking at it, especially. It's very similar to Facebook, but I mean, I, I'm, the iPad, you're absolutely right. I mean, you've got 
multiple things going on there. So yeah. Eric Blackson uh, just landed in major new form. There you go. So it, it's going to take a little bit of time. We'll see how it goes. I don't, I don't expect 4,000 views on YouTube, I think but the biggest you know, thing is just push sharing. 5,000, that will give us the answer. I think the biggest thing is just sharing. You know, we kind of struggle yeah. with how do you share this. It's not quite as user-friendly as the Facebook Live is, but... I honestly think it is, and you know what I did it is, is the more, you think, the more you mess with it. So on the iPad, so I, I, you know, this is something for anyone else out there that's doing stuff like this, is that I did the share on here, and then when I hit the Facebook one, watch, if you do this, do the Facebook uh, link, and then you can actually do next, and then you can share it to groups. Yeah. So oh, I'll just share, cool. I, you know, I got to look at it, what it's looking like, but I think that's where it'll shoot us. <laughs> the big thing is it's not getting the notification, so we'll see how it goes. Yeah, exactly. So, um, it's exciting. But, what I, I think this is about the time we're about an hour in, um, I'm about to crack a bottle of Jameson Black Barrel. Drink! It's not to the dome. <laughs> it's not St. Patrick's Day yet. No, you're all right. So, I think with, with St. Patrick's Day, I've had many, many years of, the, of going up there and doing like cakes and eggs thing. It's like a tradition. And there have been years where you get absolutely hammered. There's other years that I haven't. There's other years I'm working or whatever. But I think there it is. That was perfect great audio. Fucking great cough pop. There it is. But it's time you can have fun and everything like that. Yeah, there's the sandwich for night and all that stuff. But uh, I enjoy the the holiday because it is something that you can do with people and you can actually maybe relax, kick back, and all that stuff. It's it's nice. But uh, it's no wonder people like that shit. It's nice, right? It's very good. Yeah, so, yeah, if you guys haven't had the Jameson Black Barrel, it's about, it's like, shit, now it's only like $4 more than a normal Jameson. It's so good. Yeah, I like it. The big difference is, I think it's a richer flavor. They say it's, you know, you know, charred, so I think they char the barrels even differently for this one. I think it's bourbon barrel, I think it's reused bourbon barrels and then char it again. Yeah. They could. Yeah, yeah, so, it's it's yeah so the, the Coopers call it bringing the wood back to life, end quote, is how that, that works. So they... Uh, features charred and double charred bourbon barrels that deliver unique spiciness, vanilla sweetness, and nutty <laughs> notes. The vanilla sweetness, I think, is definitely prevalent. What's the proof on that thing? 40, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, 40 yeah. proof. I'd like to see that. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 80 proof. 40%. 40%. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I'd, I'd like to see that 100. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Like they don't really do that, that, I don't think, a whole lot. It's just so sweet, man. That's dangerous. That's dangerous. Mm -hmm. See, Eric, Eric Black's on here now, you know, and we're getting back into a little bit of the format where I'm looking at this. It's still rehydrating from a heavy money Yo. drinking night at half a bottle of Booker's. Woo. By the way, for those who are listening to the audio, he says a heavy Monday drinking night. We are, as you know, recording on Whiskey Wednesday, so that is a heavy Monday night that it led into a run. Yeah, yeah and that's the mistake that a lot of us make. I mean, we've done it on the podcast. You start hitting the Booker's, and it, and it goes down smoother and smoother, and then you realize that you just drank... Fire water. <laughs> the third drink always tastes better than the first. Yeah. And the sixth one is just it's even better. a mistake. It's even better. <laughs> it's a fucking mistake. It's even better. A delicious uh, mistake. Yes. But uh, so the duck, how to be a duck on water. So the, the, the subject here is, and I, the way I look at this, and, and I'll frame it, I already kind of framed it earlier in the podcast. If you guys weren't tuning in on the live earlier, the way this works is, the, the, the metaphor is, the duck is on the water, you're looking at it, the, the picture, the, the water is, is smooth as glass, and this duck, all you see is this little, like, kind of, um, what's that called, the wake, the, the little wake behind it, you know what Good I mean? Job. But it's very, very subtle, it's very, very, you know, so. smooth, and it's just barely cutting the glass of the water, and that duck is just super calm, just chilling, and it goes across. Underneath the water, that thing is just pushing water, just paddling hard and all that stuff, you know what I mean? Just Underneath the water, there's just a lot of movement, and it's just very, very fast movement. And all it is is, <laughs> is, is the show, what you see, the visual, is very smooth, collected, and very uh, controlled, right? So the metaphor there is is that there's a lot of things. I, I was talking to Jake. The reason I, I like this topic right now for me and for what we've been dealing with the smoking sentiment is that there's a lot of things. We are a little bit more transparent, especially with some of our regulars, especially after last year with the fire marshal coming in, and we were kind of blown away by it. We weren't expecting it. But all the while, someone said this to me, I think it was year one or two, maybe three, that we were doing the smoking tent event, and they, they were like, dude, this, you guys have it just so nailed down. It's just so smooth. It's like there's no problems. And it's one of those things, that's what you want. You want that visual yeah. to the vendors, to the consumers, everyone in attendance. 
they might see you kind of going a little bit fast because you can't hide under the water in a, in a matter of speaking. But all in all, from start to finish, it's a controlled environment. It's a successful event. There's no hiccups, and everyone, you know, they might you can't please 300 people all the time. You can't please no. 10 people sitting in the same room. But uh, it's something that uh, I think that uh, when it's all said and done, the show is very calm, collected, and very well buttoned up. Where underneath the water, and that even includes the preparation, how do you get to that point? But underneath the water, it's like there's a lot of fucking moving parts that you may or may not see. Yeah, there's a lot. It's like a it's like a, a concert. It's like a stage show, right? Yeah. Behind the scenes, they're doing like set changes. They're doing costume changes. They're doing like you know all sorts of shit behind. But on the stage, what you're actually seeing is exactly what the product is. That's what they want you to see. So I figured you said you were going with you know how to be a duck on water and like an actual duck. duck. Well, and not get shot by the hunter. Okay. Just Take your different one. <laughs> oh, I don't even know where this one's going. Well, so I was, I mean, I was talking to my girlfriend, and that was, you know, a line that she said. I'm thinking, oh, that's kind of a unique way to look at it, because you talked to her tonight. Yeah, or earlier before we got started, because I was, I mean, honestly, I had zero clue on what the that's ironic topic was. Which part? The fact that she was talking about it. Yeah, she was talking about it. You brought it up to her. No, I brought it up. Okay, so he was like texting when we were in the garage here. Uh, yeah, well, right after I found out what the uh, topic was, I was like, that would be actually creepy if she was, that was about it. Yeah, I would be a little concerned, but I'd check my fucking right? phone for viruses. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> bugs, <laughs> wires, taps, the whole nine. Whatever. But Kathy, you're very trustworthy. It's a great scene. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I mean, I guess if you think about it, you know, with being a duck on water, you, you do have a lot of. You moving parts and you don't get to see a lot of that. I have no idea what it's like being a duck in water. I don't I feel like I can get a pretty good, good picture here. Based on the the Picasso over here. I pulled a Steve. Did you? Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Now you're being the asshole. Oh well I guess it's my turn to take I'm sorry, go ahead. Jokes, go, ahead, so. go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> but I think and if you take that spin of quote and not get shot by the hunter, it's you don't wanna show all of the moving parts. Yeah. You know, huh. so if you think about it, if a right. duck is swimming on the water, it's it's gliding smoothly. Okay, you don't see all those moving parts. The second it starts flapping around, you see water splashing around, and the legs kicking out this and the other. Boom. Or taking off to fly. Yeah, or taking off to fly. It's a lot more visual for the hunter to see it. Right. Okay, think of like the hunters. You know, the 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 uh, the attendees for the ten event. You know, you don't want to see all the moving parts. You don't want to see any kind of chaos. But say. Something were to go haywire, and all of a sudden, you know, things get chaotic. And you know, I'm not saying that you know Steve would you know get flustered. You just see him going kind of all over the place. Oh yeah, you did last year, and so I got them on the mic again. Well, but at the same time, not a lot of people. You know that. I know that because I was the one asking outside of the tent, like, what do I need to do? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But see, those are some of the things you were outside of the tent. Right. Those are some of the things you're still underwater in a yeah. sense. You start bringing those things inside the tent. Yeah. Yeah. All of those things are visible now all of a sudden. All right, right. You know? So if you, if you put that spin on it, you, in order to get things to move smoothly, you, you want to kind of try to keep things under that water yeah. as much as possible. That's not always going to be. Yeah, I mean, that's where you get to the, the level of, like, you know, hard in your sleeve, you're showing your emotions, all yeah. that stuff. I mean, yeah. I, I brought it up because of the, the tent, and that's something that, you know, I. I'm dealing with right now there's a lot of like I said moving parts and like yeah we could keep it it, it almost I think helped after last year the way things went down it helped that we are a little bit more transparent on all the steps but I mean ideally when you're planning an event like that yeah. you, you want it to be everything's taken care of just you know we want you and that's what I always say if you ask if they can help in any way and all that stuff and if you're not working at the center box you're not working for us then it's just no this is for you we appreciate it we absolutely love the fact you want to help us out but the biggest thing is, is that this is for you, and we want you to enjoy the event. We've got it covered. Everything's cool. Like, you know, just yeah. show up, and you're blown away by it. And that's the goal, obviously, is that you have that kind of, that picturesque, you know, again, going back to that metaphor, you know, you want it just to be this very scenic and very enjoyable, you know, kind of uh, mood. But when it all comes down to it, to make it that point, there's so much legwork that goes into it. It's literally. Metaphor on metaphor. Literally. Like I, yeah. I mean, I, it's awesome. I, uh. Pun intended. Yeah, literally. Um, it's interesting because 
I honestly had no idea what I was really going to talk about, and I still don't kind of know what I'm going to talk about. But the, the first thing that comes to my head is like flipping the script and kind of talking about how it's great for a big event when you're dealing with a lot of different moving parts. Mm -hmm. But using the metaphor for a single person, I think it could be bad where yeah. someone is always looking at themselves as face value and they're trying to put on a front. That's where I kind of take it, where there's a lot of things in your life that, you know, people bottle up because they're afraid to, I can see that. they're afraid to like tell their friends, they don't want people worrying about them, they don't want their family like freaking out and they bottle everything up and then when it comes down to it, they either get drunk one night or they've just like had it and they like told oh, me like two weeks ago no well yeah but <laughs> i wasn't gonna bring it up but yeah, yeah. i want to check out episode what was that 54 55 56 56 there you go <laughs> but i mean that's what i i need a drink that's what i think of <laughs> <laughs> oh perfect <laughs> that's what i think of when i'm <laughs> listening to the metaphor itself because I, I think of myself and the the times where i'm kind of showing my cards to people I feel the happiest. But the times when, even if it's people that I don't really know, and that even if they're, you know, my supervisor at work, or anyone like in a higher stature than myself in a job, I feel like if I'm not showing my cards and at least being honest with how I'm feeling with them, I feel that I'm doing a disservice to myself and that I'll eventually like, I'll, I'll blow and then it'll just like go wrong from there. So it's kind of an interesting twist on it, but that, that's the way I look at it. If you're, exactly. if you're taking it, no, if you're taking it to a single person level, now I agree if you're dealing with, like, uh, I'd bring up, like my job, for instance, working at a cemetery, a lot of people don't understand what all goes into the coordination of a cemetery. Right. And how, like, markers need to be ordered, how you're dealing with families, um, how you're also dealing with burials and you're making sure everything's going okay and then once you get back to the office you're dealing with some woman that's bitching you out about the fact that there's leaves on her headstone you know what I mean like so it's and people like that just they're the people that have been bottling up things and they're the duck that is trying to be like all calm and cool and collected and then one thing sets them off and they're fucking flapping their wings and shit and they just want to bitch to somebody about it even yeah. if it's not a big deal. I don't think that's always the case. I think I, I, I get what you're saying. I think it's the extreme. But I think in a personal setting, I'm not saying to everyone. That it's not like 100% that you just always have to be like everything's fine. I know you're not. I'm just yeah. adding that in. I, I get it. But I'm, I think to the point that you're making, before you get to that, that level where it's just you're bottling. I'm not saying bottling it up. I'm saying that so your family life or there are people you can lean on, right? But yeah. to... To your job, you got shit going on at home. You got fucking, you 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 got in a car wreck. You got you you know. I'm thinking of things like you know you have un, un, unintentional or unexpected expenses. So now all of a sudden you're stressed on that, right? You're stressed in your relationship. You're stressed with whatever it is. You don't really care for your job. You, you know all these like negative things. If you just like you know go to the doctor and get some you know happy pills and that's just it and you're just hoping that the antidepressants not saying that you don't need them sometimes but it's like that's your solution only and the hope is that it just goes away i agree that you're going to bottle it up and that's not that's not necessarily i get that that's the extreme if that's what you're shooting for but what i'm saying is, is that when you get to the point of trying to if if you do have control over it and you have some healthy outlets of of the stress or whatever is you know Whatever, the, not even the stress, but the stressful parts of whatever it is, right, in your personal life. When you go to your job, you put a smile on your face. You don't bring it to there. You don't wear your heart on the sleeves, depending on it. If you're, you're talking to your family, you're talking to uh, your friends or whatever it is, and you're like, hey, man, I need to talk or whatever it is. I need to get this off my chest. Like, this is crazy. That, that absolutely is the healthy way to do it. You don't just always, you're not an island. I don't, I don't suggest being an island and just always having that. You know that that persona that everything's cool and everything. like nothing ever bothers Jake like Jesus Christ and then yeah you're gonna fucking lose it yeah you know what I mean like to the point yeah I mean the, two weeks ago if that was just you know the the five of us in the garage and, and I had that you know where I was just completely gassed and everything else and it wasn't on a podcast you know we let people in we let people have a window into our lives to a point but if it was just that that is the outlet a lot of times this is my outlet 
It's just sometimes things get the best of you. And if you're not taking care of yourself, you're not getting enough sleep, you're not you know, doing all that stuff, that stuff will bottle up and you're going to explode, like you're saying, in my opinion. But I think that the healthy side of it is, is that you want to be able to have your outlets, but to the most, most of the world, you yeah. want to present yourself, not at all costs, but present yourself like you've got things under control. You don't necessarily need to vent or, you know, hey, how's it going? I get, you know, and flat out lie, but you just put a face on, you know, like everything's going well, you know, we've got, you know, ups and downs, but I mean, overall, I'm, I'm having great, you know, great time, great week, all that stuff. You know, if someone says, how's your week going? You're like, shit, man, it, I'm fucking about to lose it. I think I might shoot the next person that comes in here because, you know, I'm up to my eyeballs in debt. You know what I mean? My car got a flat tire, my girlfriend left, and my dog's sick. And then on top of that, my mom won't even talk to me because I said something at the last Thanksgiving dinner and I haven't talked to her in months. And they're like, I'm good. How do you make all these examples I don't know. like Bob's the Ripper? Well, I don't understand, understand it. I don't know. It's believable, right? Yeah. So. No? No, it is. That's what I'm saying. But I'm, I'm, my point is, is that it, that's the bottled up part of it. You know what I mean? It's, it's just, you want to put a face on, you want to put a persona on, you want to be that duck on top of the water, in my opinion, no matter what it is, unless you're in that venting outlet that you have in your life. That's part of the segmenting it. You know what I mean? Like, for, for example, whether it's your personal life or business or whatever it is, when you get in front of a customer, like for your job or whatever, or if you get in front of, you know, and to a point, sometimes you're, you're, you don't want to just always vent to your significant other. You know what I mean? If all it is is you come home and you just are negative, 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 yeah. that's, that's not good either. You can't just have a sounding board constantly. You know, it has to be that give and take. So sometimes you, you want to be that presentation for the significant other. And it's like, you know what? I had a rough day, but how, how was your day? You know what I mean? You, you kind of, you, you scale it back. Yeah. I think I have to, obviously I'm going to go to my agree yet disagree stance that I tend to go for. This is incredibly smooth. It really it is. is. It's a lot different than anything we normally try. It's just different. It's yeah. good though. It's have good. you seen Patty's day? Yes. Yep. It's not seen Patty's day yet. Ray Chester's on. Yeah. Not, he I, found us on YouTube. I, God damn it. Ray, we tried to avoid you, but you found us. Damn it. I'm just a duck on the water. I'm just here. kidding. So, I think I, I have to agree with Jake on the bottling things up. I think it kind of depends on the person's personality and their nature. Um, <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I know I'm... I'm one, and I, I get it from my mother because she's the same way. So she bottle things in and not talk about them, especially if something's wrong. Like, well, what's going on? No, I don't want to talk about it. Nothing's yeah, wrong. Yeah. No, I, I know someone to know. I don't want to talk about it. Nothing's wrong. And yeah. this and the other. Whereas, you know, I tend to just bottle it up because I don't want to talk about it or um, just. I don't want to, the biggest thing is I don't want to put my issues on someone else. I want to interject here is that when someone's asking you, for example, if they get to that point where they're like, what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong, you're like, nothing, I don't want to talk about it, you're no longer, the, like, that duck is starting to flap its wings with that no, metaphor, I, you know what I mean? Like, they're, yeah. they're starting to notice something, and in your metaphor, it's like the hunter's starting to, like, zone yeah. in on you because it's like, you're not ahead of the curve there, you know what I mean? You are starting to show all those signs. Yeah, well, I mean, the question is, is that a good or bad thing? So it's not good or bad. Yeah. I mean, you okay. can't, again, if you could, I'd say it's a bad thing if that's, you know, we, Jake and I, sorry, Dustin, but Jake and I had a, a, a moment uh, in time where it was, um, shit, that was months ago, maybe even a year ago, where it was like, you know, you were getting frustrated with me when I'm asking you, like, why is everyone fucking asking me that? It's like, because that's what you're portraying. If everyone's asking you that, that I think, it's not a bad thing, but it's it's something that it's like if you don't if you don't see that you're doing that, it's like open your your eyes and ears that people are asking you because that's what everyone's seeing in you know what I mean like not just you but I mean, everyone goes through that it's like because there is that frustration like man everyone keeps asking me that it's like okay so what why do you think that is you know what I mean like that you're not like you are it's not it's not like it's admirable to a point that you wear your heart on a sleeve, but it's like, if that's how you're living your life day in, day out, and it's enough time's gone by, it's like, people just keep saying they want me to be happy. It's like, right, so join the party and, and try to start seeing what everyone else is seeing, and then we can actually move forward, because unless you want to just call it quits right now, 
let's fucking figure it out so that you can get back to being that person enjoying your fucking cruise on the lake. So, where I was going was, Sorry. no, you're good, you're good. Um, I mean, people like myself, where I wear my heart on my sleeve, but I'll put a cloak over it. Wow. We're, so, we're, we're metaphors. <laughs> oh my God. So, where I think Jason's going to cut up and just go home. <laughs> and then he just tunes in. I couldn't take it on YouTube. Yeah. My, way, my wings are flapping right now. <laughs> Shoot me. <laughs> Down. No. Shoot me. Wow. <laughs> where, so, I don't, I don't like to talk about my issues. Yeah. Um, especially, even, even to people I care about. Yeah. Because I don't want to put that on anyone else. It's not their issues. It's mine. Uh, and so I bottle it up. And so I and I put on a front. That's where that is. That a good or bad thing? I'll ask Jake's question. Well, that's that's the thing where you know you said um, I forget what it was, but um, bottling things up like you need to get it out. For some people, and I know like for myself, there's a lot of people out there who just can't get it out because it's to them it's being vulnerable and it's it could be a fear of theirs. So, so at all costs, you are that calm duck. You know what I mean? You 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 force yourself to be that calm duck. But down underneath, you could be not just flapping your legs, but your wings are down under the water too. And at that point, like you just yeah, you're just shitting in the lake at that point. I'm <laughs> dumb shit in the lake, man. It's not clean water. Uh, yeah, but yeah. But that I mean that's that's I guess where you know a different route that I was going with it based on what yeah. Jake said, where it's it could be a a personal aspect as well versus you know. You know, a, a larger event where there are more moving parts. I agree completely. I think the, the, the event thing is just an easier thing to wrap your head mm. around. I think the personal yeah. side of it is, I think, so I guess for me with the, the duck in the water whole thing is, is with, with it being your personal life, day in, day out, you're going to have your ups and downs. You're going to have to deal with your struggles and you're also going to have to embrace your, sure. your joys. You know what I mean? You're going to have to do that. The, the point for me is, is that it's not just being strong and being like bottling it up and not putting your burdens on everyone else and, and you know wearing your heart on your sleeve. I'm saying is is to be to to actively present yourself the way that you want to present yourself. It's not necessarily bottling things up or lying to people or anything like that, but it's like Know your audience, know what the goals are. Today is the same day that you had yesterday and hopefully you'll have the same opportunity tomorrow to be able to present yourself the way you want to for the, for the good of yourself, for the good of other people, for the good of the goals that, that are going to hopefully benefit you and others. That's the whole thing. That's what my, my point of it is, is that the legs underneath don't always need to be what people see. It's, it's not, you have to have this open life necessarily. Yeah, it's good to yeah. show some vulnerability. Because that's that's fine. That that's absolutely fine in my opinion. What I'm saying is that with this whole metaphor of, of how to be a duck on water is when when you can, you want. In my opinion, I want I want to be able to present myself that for the most part everything's going well for the purpose of what I'm doing at that time. Yeah. I don't want to be, and, and this is a, a topic I've been wanting to get at, and I think we're going to do it in a couple weeks. Is is to actively be present in the moment. Yeah. And that's kind of part of this, is that you want to keep control of the moment and, and keep control of the day to the point. I'm not saying that we're all going to struggle. Some days you, you some days you can't. Some days you are flapping your wings. Some days you are in fact that just crystal clear lake, you know what I mean? And sometimes if you want to go deeper in the metaphor, sometimes the lake or the pond has a lot of waves in it and that duck is struggling. You know what I mean? That's a deeper part of the metaphor is that the outside factors are actually going to make it a little harder to actually just cruise across, even though the only thing going is the legs underneath, you know, pushing you across that. But now you've got these, these, these waves coming and crashing on you. And it's like, how do you stay on that course where you're trying to go and actually stay calm? That's it. Again, diving deeper in the metaphor. It's a great point though. And I, I agree with that. I just wanted to bring up that simple fact of the fact that it can be different. Like with, it depends on the situation. That's all I wanted to do. And with the whole, the whole duck on the water thing, I think when it, it but Steve and I talk a lot about circumstance, right. I'm a really, really big guy on circumstance because I don't think most people do that where something happens and they're not thinking of the circumstance. Steve and I have talked about like my job, for instance, where a lot of the people in the business are very short minded and they think of, you know, because at the end of the day, my job is sales. 
if you want to look at yeah. that as a negative or po I don't really care, but I'm selling plots for a living. Nothing negative about and that, in my opinion. I know, well, in your opinion, but some people may misconstrue that as, well, you're making money off of death. And but what I say to people is the fact that if it is a business, there is costs that come to it for to, to pay people that actually, you know, give you a service. I think that's a very, very feel, not even feel good, I think it's, uh, I think it's, that's making money off of doing that. It's, it's like going back to the farming side of it. Farmers are making a living off of feeding people. It's like, oh, you should just do it out of your goodness of your heart. It's like, yeah, no, get out of here. That's, yeah. not how this world, that's not how capitalism works, and that's where we're at. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, is that with all of that, when it comes to, like, the cemetery with my coworkers, it's like when they're worried about sales, but then you ask them, and the most important thing is to make sure that the burial was successful. Absolutely. So when you're dealing with the burial and how serious of a matter that is, I think that all hands should be on deck, and that is, like, first priority. Mm -hmm. And right. then you worry about sales. But yeah. if you're getting flack from, say, like your, like, you know, not even to tie in last week, but like the corporate world and people that are hierarchies yeah. of who, like, of your position, they're trying to get, like, you know, they're saying, hey, like, we need sales, like, you're not hitting your quota, but it's also like, hey, you've had 20 burials in the last two weeks. So what, what time do I have? Would you rather have, something get messed up because I'm worried about sales and then the procession shows up and then and then the really then the ducks really flapping their wings because there's no hole in the ground. Right. You know what I mean? So yeah. I just think about circumstance when it comes to this kind of topic where if you're not dealing with like the circumstance at hand and even if you do need to flap your wings, not worrying about the hunter and you're just able to get the fuck across the pond without getting shot. I think you win. Yeah. There's a metaphor for you. There you go. It's uh, an episode full of metaphors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, hearing, hearing Steve talk about, you know, just staying calm and, you know, I mean, it, it sounded like no matter what, you just have to put a cover on. Like, just put a cover over whatever's going on and just keep moving forward or... You know, it's not cover, cover. like cover up what what's going on underneath the water to okay. keep it. No, it, it, I, I don't I'm just looking at it at a different playing devil's advocate. That's that's all I was doing. Creating conversation. Yeah, it was, it was just <laughs> a, well, the pop so we, we keep going with the negative. I'm I'm saying like even when things are are good, right? And yeah. Again, I keep going back to that topic that is still in my head because I. I I get I'm it. excited to talk about it, but like, yeah. the whole thing is, it's not always when things are bad. Like, it, mm -hmm. it's easy to go to that in this conversation, right? But it's mm -hmm. again when things are going well and you're distracted or whatever it is. Like with with this house thing, it's like there was some stress with all that stuff, and we've talked about it on here. Nope. But it's like when I'm at the, at the shop and I've got a handyman here, the the tile guy was here, and like everything was going on at once. And, and I was fortunate enough to have people helping me out, like you know my my mom and Liz, and, and you know they were here when I couldn't be here. But then I'm also working at the shop and, and dealing with customers and then also trying to plan some yeah. of this stuff for the tent event all at the same time. And then on my phone's ringing and it's like, I'm trying to do it. And I went to Brian, I'm like, hey man, I apologize because you know I'm trying to be there. I'm trying to be, you know, present myself the way I want to present myself as if none of this is happening outside of the, the yeah, shop. Right. Everyone's asking me, how's the, how's the house going? I'm telling them it's going well and all that stuff. And, but like when things are actually happening, my phone's ringing and then people are like, Hey, we got a question about this. Like, hey, can you come over to the house? Like, no, I can't right now, but I can talk to you about it tonight. Blah blah yeah. blah, blah, blah. It's like, uh, it's those are good things happening, sure, but at the same time, I want to present myself in a professional manner. I want to present myself as if this is not anyone else's issue. But when I apologize to, to my boss, the owner of the shop, Brian at Tinderbox, is that you know he's he's like, why are you apologizing? Like, I, I know you got a lot going on, but to me, it's like I don't I don't want it to affect you. You know, it's not a cover. It's literally okay. just my, my honest and, and and what I my honest opinion and, and my feeling that I want actually to present myself a certain way when I'm in certain atmospheres and all that stuff. Whether we're doing it in the garage and the camera's off and, and one of us have a heart to heart or whatever something's going on, we can do it on the podcast. We can do it in private. But when we're at the shop and a customer walks in, or if you're at the you know you're you're doing that and you're at the actual processional or whatever, you're at the wake and you know at your business at Kroger. 
you're not going to fucking ream out a, a, an employee in front of, you know, in the no. produce section in a Kroger, you know what I mean? You're not going to, yeah. you do, you're, that's a mistake, and there are yeah. plenty of bosses that do that. You're going to yeah. shove them under the water and then yell at them. Waterboarding? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's where I'm going. <laughs> Local news tonight about Kroger, they had a, a, a manager, assistant store manager, I believe it is, uh, waterboarding a produce guy. In your old Kroger. Good job, Dustin. High five. Woo! Love it. Tune in to 9 and 11 to, to see live footage. That's coming. Put your kids work. to bed. That's good management. <laughs> That's really good management. No, I just... Matt Styles, welcome. Made it another, welcome, another right. avid podcast viewer. Yes. Find yeah. us on YouTube. We have hit double digits on YouTube, everyone. <clears throat> no, it went back down to 9. Shh. No, I'm on 10. Okay. Uh, well, you got the iPad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just... I, I was yeah, going sorry. for a, a different avenue of... You know, any listeners were going that route. Yeah. Obviously, you know, we don't want to go down the negative route of it, but you got to play both sides of the coin, or you know, all exactly six sides of the dice. Exactly. So, yeah. and that's and that's where I was going with it because some some instances, you know, some people may look at it as, well, you know, I'm just putting a cover on what's really going on. Right. Which, in some instances, could be good, but at the end of the day. You can only do that for so long. Yeah, you know it's one of those things. If if you're in front of if you're in front of people, you're in front of customers. Whatever the the issue is, right? So it's like the same thing. Like going back to Jake's job, right? So he he's stressed. His legs are you no, know, you're 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 whatever it is, like solemn face. You know what I mean? Like you're not like always like happy, but like you are focused on that 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 moment where you're in it and you're trying to be that steadiness for them. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what the circumstances are. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if, you know, again, like, something happened, it doesn't always have to be extreme, but, like, something happened where you're frustrated. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you're driving over to it, and you, you know, you, you blow out a tire. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, motherfucker. But it's like, you still get there. By the time you get there, they're going to be like, oh, thanks for making it. You're like, yeah, man, I had a fucking terrible day. I was driving over here, and my tire blew out. It's like, that is not important right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, that's that cover. It's like putting a smile on or putting your... I, I, you know, I put that like that face on where it's just like at that moment, it's about them. It's about, you know, that's that's the task at hand. So that's where it is, where all that shit where you're, you're again, going back to the metaphor, your feet are going like crazy and all of a sudden the waves are crashing in. But at the same time, that duck is just kind of got that face on that's just very calm, not really looking around, just going to just ride it out, just ride, you know, still going. Yeah. There's nothing you can do about that other stuff right now other than stay on the task at hand. Yeah, no, I... I mean, I agree with it. And that I'm not objecting to literally anything. I'm, we're just, I, I think I'm just adding in like more shit to the pile, really. And more metaphors? Yeah. Well, not even more metaphors, just like uh, just different ways of thinking about it because I don't really know what to talk about with this subject. But I mean, that's what came to my head. And I, I, think, I think we're actually driving in a deeper concept, if you will, where it's, you know, talking about like people and their mindsets in, in general. And people have a, you know, I know I have a hard time with, I'm just kind of the same as Dustin, where I have a hard time with the whole, you know, trying to put on a face, like, because I go on Tuesday nights, you know, I go to the shop straight from my job. Yeah, so it's nice like I go, I go with that, and I already feel bad about the fact that, you know, I've had to already change the schedule since I've started my new job. And so instead of sh- showing up at four, luckily, like, we're a tight knit group and we're friends and we understand each other, but and understand that people have issues. And Ron can cover me f- for an extra hour and a half, and yeah, he don't mind because he gets paid. And but you know, I get mad because I'm showing up like basically an hour and a half late every Tuesday, even though it's like the regular norm now. But then you know, I'm dealing with traffic coming over. It's right at rush hour, and then I got to put a face on as soon as someone comes in the right. door and say, "Hey, like, how, how's your day going?" and everything and you know, what can I grab you today? Like, do you have a good day? It's a nice day out. Like, how's the weather or whatever? You know, it, it's just... It's so that's like, the point where you're actually already doing it a lot of times. You know what I mean? Yeah, but that's something that, like, I had to learn. Like, I'm that's saying... That's the point of this this whole discussion is that... Right, but, that, I'm driving, that's, that's it, yeah. but I'm driving towards people... I think people have... I think they're either two sides of the coin. There's someone that either they, they show all their cards and they're always flapping their wings and they're going to get shot in the back of the head... Or there's someone that yes. always puts a face on, and, and it's always the best picture in the world across, you know, the clean-cut glass of the water. 
Yeah, so it's yeah, kind yeah. of I'm tr I'm trying to I'm not saying everyone's like this, but again, I think you know at the beginning of this podcast when we started like a year ago or so, we always talked about like finding a purpose, and I think the I think our fucking motto is like finding balance because that's what literally we're talking about. Like we're talking about two different sides of the coin, but then finding a balance between. Like flapping your wings, dodging the bullets, dodging the waves, trying to get across the pond, the lake, the fucking ocean, it doesn't matter. And then, but also like staying true to yourself in the same sense. And I think once you find that happy medium, and I think that I finally have, and it's taken, you know, this past year has been pretty rough, a year and a half or so. Don't worry, you'll lose it again. Yeah, I know, but it's until then, I'm, you know, it, it's it's the circumstance. It's the circumstance and the pri how I prioritize the the system. If it's something that I'm dealing with my job on a the system. If it's something that I'm dealing with my job on a regular basis, regular basis, like at the cemetery, it's like I know the prioritization. Steve and I have talked about right. how disorganized the place is, and that doesn't mean it's a bad place. It just means things need fixed. And I'm trying. The, it's really where your heart fixed. And I'm trying the, it's really where your heart lies, I think. Heart lies, I think. So if your heart's set on something where you're trying to do the best effort that you can while also allowing people to make sure that you're happy, allowing people to know that you're happy, or even if you had it happy, allowing people to know that you're happy, or even if you had a shitty day, had a shitty day, but they know that you're okay. And then also having the same concept on of just allowing yourself to always be open. You know, itself to always be open. You know, it's kind of like mingling and meshing the two, if, if you will. So, go ahead, Dustin. I'm I think there is something else here. The last version, in a sense, that, you know, Steve, you brought up was that no matter what, like you just gotta keep moving forward. Right. You know, sometimes you Great gotta segue to what I wanna talk about. Yeah, it's big it, Rob. Yeah, point your back. Yes. It uh it it I reminded me of the whole hand shit. in your face. Yeah. That when you have your hand in your face and you can't see what's going on, sure. Your legs are gonna be going insanely crazy, you're gonna be flapping your your wings are gonna be all over the place because you're not focusing on what really is important and focusing on the direction that you want to go in. Yeah. And that's where you gotta take a hand away, you gotta refocus on what it is, find that balance like you said, Jake, um, and and keep the rest of you above water to present yourself in that manner that you want to be seen as your character as a person. Yeah. Because I think if you have this, that and the third going on and you're letting it all kind of out in the world and you're just flailing about, is that really a proper representation of you and your character yeah you know <clears throat> it is at that point in time and, and it is and maybe that's not even the, the actual true representation of you and who you are yeah because of everything else that's going on whether it be you know the waves or the hunter shooting at you or whatever it might be um in the hundred metaphors that we've had so far <laughs> but I love it. you know you just have to reevaluate yourself and really start with your roots and, and, and get that refocus and find that balance, focus on what's most important and, you know, reprioritize right. and just settle down. All right, so, so, so segue into what the, 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 and I did not allude to any of this to, to Jake when we were talking about this, and obviously we great where I talked to, to Dustin about this. Great. Uh, the fact that he just walked into the, the garage and found out that we, we came up with this topic that we did not share with him. And there's something else now? No, it's the same. It's the same metaphor. So right. So so what happens? Same metaphor. How do we duck on water, right? So you're 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 cool, calm, collected. You know what I mean. But underneath the water, the legs stop moving. So that's what I was saying. That's a good segue. Like Dustin's talking about the fact that it's like you know you keep moving forward. I say that a lot. You know what I mean. I say that a lot in a lot of my check-ins at the gym and yeah. and you know a lot of things that I try to put out there is that we're trying to you know you you want to keep moving forward, no matter what the circumstance. If they're good, you keep moving forward. You know, if they're yeah. bad, you keep moving forward. It's not always like just bad shit's happening, you gotta, gotta get past it and just see the light in the tunnel. 
it's the same thing. If you are not kicking your legs as a duck on the water, what are you doing? Yeah, I think that was... What are you doing? What are you doing? I think you're just standing still and you're complacent. Right. So that's the other aspect of this is that when you are on, like, if you, you stop moving forward, if you stop pushing those legs, right, if it's a calm lake, you just sit there. Like you said, you're complacent. If on the, the, the same note where you're not kicking your legs, and that's, at that point, it's that other part of the metaphor is that, you, you know, the, the, the wind's starting to pick up, so that, that pond is now, you know, it's a lake. You're starting to get waves, right? And you're trying to get to this point, or you're trying to, to keep moving forward, but what happens is, is that, you know, instead of actually kicking your legs and, and doing all that work mm -hmm. that we're talking about, what we were talking about on the, the previous side of the metaphor, is that you're doing all this work, but if you stop doing all that work, what do you do? You're either standing still, nothing's happening around you, and you're complacent, like you said, Jake, yeah. or you, you let the other things, you let the waves start beating down on you. You let the outside factors start beating down on you, and you're not trying to move. You are now almost in that quicksand, but on the, uh, this metaphor, you are just subject to where the outside factors and the waves are going to push you, and where they're going to push you, and what they're going to do to you, as opposed to pumping those legs and continuing down your path, no matter what it is. Yeah, you might get beat up, you might get hit by a couple of waves, but at the same time, you're, you're moving forward. I think you're, you're, you're still working, you're still churning, you're still... Yeah. Uh, it's such a cliche thing. You're still grinding. You know what I mean? You're still you're still kicking towards what you want to do. I've got a <clears throat> opposite side of that. The waves are pushing you. You're going. You, the, the the currents pushing you. Okay. You're you're flowing in the direction that you want to go though. Yeah. So you're not complacent. Things are moving in a positive way that right. you want it to go. Outside to where, forces. Outside forces. <clears throat> so you things, lose that hunger. Well, you, you may lose that hunger, but things are going in the direction that you want it to go. Okay. So you don't keep kicking your legs. Wow. And you're going with the flow of the curve because it's going in the direction that you want to go. Wow. I, I, different way yeah, to look at it. I mean, that's... No, but I'm saying the same thing, right? It, so, it, again, it things is, are going well. So, you stop, so you ride that current. Sometimes it's okay to ride. No, I'm not saying... Bit. No, but that's what, way, like, but if, if anything's like pushing you towards that and you slow your kick down... That's when you start, you, you open yourself up to losing that goal because it's like if that wind stops pushing and all of a sudden you, that's when you do become complacent because all of a sudden you've been riding that current, everything's going well. The current you know what I mean? So you take things for, like, how many times do you talk about taking things for granted when you look back at things? Yeah. A lot. A lot. A lot. So that's that's what you were just saying is that yeah. that's you taking things for granted. You stop that, that podcast we had with AJ, right? It? But is he? Unless in this metaphor, I think you are. Really? I think you can still kick. You, you still can, yeah. You, you can. still kick. What, what happens when there's... I'm not saying moving past it. I'm not, it's not a negative thing to keep doing that. It, it's actually trying to capitalize on things going. Is it's it fine a, to take time for yourself and, and, and enjoy what's happening because things yeah. are going down the right path. But it, you have to, in my opinion, you have to stay active. You have to continue... <laughs> The way that you, in my opinion, the way that you embrace it and relax it a little bit, but you still, maybe you're not kicking like you're going against the current necessarily, but you're kicking a little bit to continue, like to encourage this stuff to stay good. You know, yeah. you talk about relationships and stuff like that, right? So everything's going well and all that stuff, and that's that, that romantic side of it, is that everything's going well and everything yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, everything seems great, and then all of a sudden, you just take things for granted. So you stop doing certain things. You stop picking up after yourself. You stop, you know, you know, you, you start putting on a few pounds because you're not watching after yourself for your personal benefit. And that's what they fell in love with. We've had these podcasts before. That's that current that's carrying you. That all of a sudden, when that shit stops, that current stops, it, you're, you're behind. And now you're getting pushed back because now all of a sudden it's like you become complacent and you, you stop taking care of yourself. And you took the other person for granted. You took the job for granted. But if you that, stop going for those sales, for you, it's like phones ringing, all that <laughs> stuff, this is all good, and you're, you're doing well, and you're making good money, but all of a sudden the phone stops, stops ringing, and you didn't do the legwork that was part of the job the whole time. Yeah. Not because you didn't have the time, but because you're like, oh, this is great, man, I'm fucking making more money than I thought I could. I'm, I'm, this, I see no end in sight, and then like within a year, it's like everything slowed down because you stopped going after new leads. You stopped developing the future because time keep, kept moving on and you were just riding that wave. I agree. That wave is gonna stop. I agree, I agree completely. <laughs> I'm just thinking about how 
if I think we're talking about like positive and negative momentum, where okay. yeah. if if there's something going on that's positively, you kind of want to capitalize on like what you said, Steve. But if there's negative momentum and you kind of fall like fall back and then it you kind of idle by, then I think talking about life in general, you lose purpose. And as humans, I think we need purpose. I agree. But you know, after listening to both of you, I, I'm like almost like creating a new metaphor in my head where it's like I, I I'm thinking about like a like if someone's fishing like on a lake and on a boat, like you kind of cast the reel, sit, see what happens, I love it. and then if nothing bites, you go to the next one. Like I, I think, I, and I portray. Take a sip of your drink, and then you move on. Yeah, and I portray I portray that to like where I am in life, okay. where it's much different than where you guys are in your lives. And you know, as a twenty year old, like it, it, it is my twenty four now. By 20, the way. Yeah, twenty four, you know, everyone. Twenty four. Um, it's official. Yeah, it is official. But you know, twenty four, like in my point in life, like it, it, it's my time to take risks. It's my time to like jump from job to job within reason and you know take risks to maybe see the light at the end of the tunnel because I because I can't really see it. I don't even know like what next year's gonna withhold. It's just one of those things where it's kinda like you gotta cast the reel, see what bites, like at least in my point in my life, but never lose any effort behind it. And but if you're you know if you're the duck, it doesn't matter if you're the fucking duck or the, the fisherman that's sitting there and he's just sitting there to sit there, then you lose purpose and you forget like why you're doing what you're doing. And yeah. and that's sad. I, I think it's really sad and I don't think that's yeah, that's what I was trying to chime in with. I know that's yeah, what I'm that's trying to say. No, I think it's really about. sad when people do that. And I've seen way too many people with, you know, even family members that have done that. It's like I'm trying to get them to like cast that line again and say, like just you just for one second, just for one second, cast the fucking line and see what bites. Like you, everyone, you know, I've been listening to like Gary V lately, like more than I, I used to be a huge fan of him. I kind of like dropped off and I, got, how it goes. I like got it's back to him. And you know, he's talking about you know the people from like you know twenty to like thirty. Like take. Oh, you're sharing that. I love that. Yeah, like take risks, but don't like be too stupid about it. But t this is the time where, like, you can like eat fast food if you need to. I mean, that's not very healthy, but like it's that's what he says. Like, eat fast food if you need to because that's what you need to do. Like, it's the time to take risks and basically from 20 to 30, like you might as well just shut your eyes and just keep your legs moving because it's like at oh, that right. point there's. You don't know what's going to happen, but if you try to counteract it and like make sure things are so precise and make sure that they're going to work, you lose sight of the bigger picture. And yeah. and that's I think that's what happened to me there for a little bit. And then I took the risk, left the job that I was miserable at. Right. I, I listened to everybody what they were saying, even though I didn't want to listen. And and then I said to myself, well, I was so scared about leaving the business because I love the people that I work for, even though that they were making me miserable. I loved the job, I, it was my passion, I enjoyed it, but it was making me absolutely miserable, it was making me unhealthy, I wasn't getting any sleep, and, it, and I found out who I was at the end of the day. I didn't wanna be that guy. I didn't wanna be the guy waking up at 4 a.m. I didn't wanna be the guy that constantly had fitness in his life, and but I wanted to be the happy medium where I could I could drink, smoke, fill these passions, these weird hobbies that I have. Um, Want to be a distillery, but also be fit, be strong as, as I can. And I, but I knew in my head that it didn't. You're still not there yet. I know I'm not. I'm not. I'm, 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 not, I'm nowhere working. close. But yeah, at you're least, working. but at least I yeah. see the different side of myself that I was missing because yeah. all I ever knew right. was football and school and regiment, and then I just traded that in for the 4 a.m. crew at Old School Gym, and not to say that that's bad, it's just yeah. I found out that that wasn't for me. And I think yeah. that's what we're really saying. I mean, parts of it were for you, but not, not it didn't fit in to you. But I didn't know who you I was a lot, then. Though. You learned a lot. I didn't know who I was becoming. Yeah. I was in that transition yeah. phase. Yeah. But what happens is, is people try to expedite it, or they try to accelerate things, yeah. and they hide shit, 
and they don't listen to themselves. And that's where I may take it to the extreme where I'm saying like people hold shit in and they don't allow themselves to talk to their friends yeah. or even talk to their bosses. Like go behind a closed door, go underwater and talk to your buddy. I don't give a shit, but at least they know where your head is. Yeah. And that again, that's I know that's taking you to the extreme, but there's a lot of people out there that are afraid to say something because even to their their boss in a respectful manner, because they're afraid that they're going to get fired the next day, even though that they know that it would help the boss out, that help the business out. But in the end, if you don't do that, you're both fucked because you're miserable, and then the business isn't even better. Well, that's where it comes back to getting back to the original metaphor is that that's that 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 collection that that's the presenting yourself in a certain way yeah you know what i mean like if you go in i think that that's an error of judgment for some people where they go in fully blown like all 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 cylinders are on emotions and you you have the best intentions but you do all that right so you talk you have that conversation that you're talking about but if you don't sit back and 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 do that whole thing like you know practice in front of someone you trust or practice Mm -hmm. in front of a mirror You, you you have this and you have to act Put a little bit of legwork in there, right? Where you come into that conversation to the point where you're like, hey, I want to talk to you about something. And you don't just, to, to your point, Jake, you don't wait to the point where you bottle it up to the point where you know you want to say something, but then all of a sudden it's just almost the smallest thing is that icing on the cake, and all of a sudden you're just like, this is what I really fucking think. Yeah, and I did that. I've done that. It's, yeah, I know, and we, we, I think a lot of people, I, I, I want to say we've all done it, I, I feel like it's, at some point most people have. you done it? Like, yeah. or have you always been, like, this cool, clean no, guy, no, 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 like, no, no, it, no. it's fine, like... No, I mean, we talked about, you know, we talked about it before in my personal life, you know, it's like, one of those things where, one of the times, you know, like, I, I, I would, the hindsight's twenty twenty. I'm not going to say I want to take it back, but there, there's something where things were not going well in my marriage, and, and I, I still love candy, and we're, we, we get along great now. And, and it's unfortunate the, the way things happen, but everything has worked out well, you know, so far long term, right? So it's like there's a mm-hmm. there's a lot of there's a lot of gains there, and there's been some losses. But one of the things that that we dealt with, at least what I dealt with, was I didn't speak up in time. Yeah, I, you know, I wasn't I wasn't, and I'm sure she had her side of it too, as far as things that she was happy and not happy with. But there was something that was really really bothering me the way our our life was progressing, and I didn't, I didn't know how to do it. I was in my, you know, my twenties, late twenties, and I didn't know how to address it like I, I necessarily can now. So I learned a lot from that. But that's one of those situations where it's like I waited so long that I didn't blow up, but at the same time I had already basically worked <coughs> it out on my own, and I was, I was deeper than I, I realized in, in those feelings. That's how it always is. It's not. It doesn't have to be. That's what I'm saying. That's, I know, but that's not how it always is. And I get what you're saying, but it's like that's not how it always is. That's the the point of 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 staying in control the best you can of that. So that's that that being active thing. That's that's what I said when I introduced the new aspect of the metaphor. It's like those legs moving. You have to stay active. Yeah, everything's going well, Dustin, and every, you know you're moving down. Everything's going well, and the, the yeah. current's taking you all know, stuff. So, you still have to stay active in your everyday life, no matter if, if things are going well or if they're going bad. That's all of that is moving forward is, is the goal. And, and yeah. carrying on and, and really, if something's bothering you, like we're talking about, whether it be professional, romantic, or whatever, personally, whatever it is, you have to do something about it. You can't just ignore it. You can't, because then you will bottle it up. It's not about just putting on the face, it's, it's the legs underneath still kicking. And that's why I waited to actually introduce that part of the topic because I wanted to do it in the moment of the podcast is that it's not just the, the difference of top and bottom when you're talking about this duck on the water. Both sides of it are, are, are j- just like talking about what Eddie, Eddie Russell said. Every side of that, every step of the way is just equally as important as the, the other. That's the whole thing. Stay in mind. For this, this part of the metaphor, it's, it's, it's the, the part that people see is equally as important as the part underneath that you are still kicking. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what, how many waves are coming in. It doesn't matter if the current's pushing you. You got to still just push a little bit. You may not have to push as hard if things are going well. You know what I mean? You don't have to stay like this 
absolute hunger that you just don't appreciate what's going on. But you have to have this constant movement where you're actually being active and, and, and staying in control of your day to day the best you can. So if something's off, something's wrong, you gotta do something about it. Sometimes your legs aren't gonna kick by itself, so that's where you actually do seek out some help. Mm -hmm. If things are going well, you don't just stop the legs and all you do is you're, you're carrying forward and hoping that it'll carry on as long as it will and, and just hope for the best and that's when you get become complacent, the, the current stops and all of a sudden the current stops because you stop pushing. That actually will yeah. help that current move a little bit. You're, you're, you're pushing forward, you're just gradually just going forward and forward and forward so that everything is, you, you're staying active, you're staying, you're staying in the moment, you're, you, you know, you're, not, you're appreciating it but you're actively appreciating it. You're not just doing it just to, to cruise and just open up your senses and be like, man, this is beautiful, man. I didn't realize this could happen. I didn't know this was real life. But as soon as you just focus on that part and your legs stop moving underneath that water, mm -hmm. you're gonna, you're gonna, that, that scenery will start shrinking and shrinking and shrinking because all you are right now, you're not contributing a goddamn thing to that. Well, because the current can change if the drop. Well, the, yeah, but you're not contributing to keeping that. No, you're that, not putting yeah. the leg work in. You're not doing the, the work to, 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 so it's the same, I'll bring up another metaphor. Right, so you have a garden out there, man. My garden looks great. My lawn looks great. You know what I mean? Everything looks amazing. My house, you know, everything's going well. Just, you know, my car, pristine. You stop washing it. You stop doing the oil changes. You stop doing these things. Then all of a sudden, you are upset because now your car's a piece of shit. Your lawn has gone to shit. Your house is falling apart because you didn't do the preventative maintenance. Yeah. You haven't actually stayed on top of it and and actively enjoyed it. You've just enjoyed it. Yeah. You've taken it every, you, you are now a receiver only. And the biggest thing is that you have to actually put something back into it so that you can continue to appreciate it. Now I think, you know, it, got I, mean, I, got, I got passionate. He, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, and, and I agree with Steve. You gotta, you gotta keep, keep moving. You gotta keep pedaling, you gotta keep paddling. Um, because you don't know when the current's just going to change. You don't know when you know life's going to throw a wrench at you, and you got to try to dodge it. And if you're not still swimming, then what? Like your legs may forget what the fuck right. you're doing, and then you're just back to square one, or then you're flapping your wings around. And you're like, what the hell's going on? Right. Yeah. I think you know to to Jake's point about you know not being afraid to reach out to people, even if it is something that you struggle with, you, you still have to, you know. If you think, and to take it up a notch in another metaphor, with, with the ducks, they're swimming, you know, they're just coaxing, but when they fly, they're always, what, in a V. They're always together. Sure. They're always there with one another. They always they always fly in a group, and it's always in a V because everyone's together yeah. helping each other out. Yes. You know? It's, it's the same kind of concept. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, they might be swimming, but when they take off, they're just still together. They've got their right-hand man. They've got their wingman. they got... The, people, the other ducks there around them to help them. Yeah. You know, you still got to be able to reach out at right. the end of the day. And I think sure. that's something that, you know, I had struggled with in the past and I've gotten a lot better about it. You have. And, you know, a lot better. Um, and that's there's, good. That's there's times where I'm like blurting about stuff and people are like, wait, why the fuck are you talking about this? But at least you're aware of it. You know, I think that's just part of it. And yeah, and yeah, you're aware of it, and that's that's the other piece of it. If you're just not aware of it, then you're not going to talk about it, and then you just constantly keep that ball rolling. That's when other people point it out to you, like, hey, what, what's going on? Right. Like, he's, you know, you've seen either it could be two different sides of the coin. It could be something negative, like, hey, you know, something bothering you? What, you know, what's going on? You, know, you haven't been yourself, or man, you seem extremely happy all of a sudden, or you know, think you know, you've been. And a much better place. Like, what, right. what's been going on? Talk to me about it. I, I want to know. And it's usually the people that care about you the most that ask, ask those questions first and foremost. You know, so, the sad part when that happens though is some people like because things. If you're one of those people that have like always been like complaining about stuff and then like you're happy for a while, they actually think that something's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. That's the I mean, sad that's, part. Yeah. I'm not, I don't want to add anything. Ne like, I know that's negative, but I don't. It, it's just a point I think that should be made. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Because all of a sudden, it's like things completely change. And you're like, wait, what happened? You're right. Like, is something wrong? Like, no. Right. Like, Drugs. Right. Yeah. Like, right. Like, what are you on? Can I get some? 
Right. But, are you high right now? Yeah. And, but, no, Dustin. But, uh, no. Okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but no, I think like you closed up there? No, no, I was pouring a glass. All right. <laughs> More importantly. Of Jameson. You should be proud. <laughs> yeah. I'm <laughs> proud of you opening up. <laughs> no, but I think that's, that's nice. another key piece. You're right. You're right. No. It's, um, I don't know, I, it's really been a good conversation, I think. Um, for, for my, like, closing remarks, I just have to go back to the thing of, like, the, the, the balance and the simple fact of seeing both sides of the coin and, like, understanding yourself and also adding in what Steve said about the whole keeping the legs driving even when things are good because that's when we choose, that's when we normally choose to not. We normally back off because things are great yeah. and we're trying to enjoy the view, but there's also that point where if you don't enjoy the view, then you can't really enjoy the spoils of what you've worked hard, like so hard for. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, double edged sword. Yeah, and um, you know, Ray Cheshire made a really good point. Like, not everyone is capable of fixing their own problems. And him and Matt Styles were talking to each other, which we love the engagement on our and the live viewership. And it's great that everybody's kind of you know transitioned over to YouTube for a second tonight. And we may you know we'll talk about it and see how the night went. But yeah. um, you know, Ray's exactly right, and I think that's when you know. When one of us introduces a topic and we introduce, it doesn't really matter who came up with the topic, but whoever introduces it and has their first like opening remarks, I don't think it should ever be looked, I'm talking to like you guys and the viewers, yeah, but yeah. I don't think every, I don't think it should be looked at like badly upon if you're like introducing like a negative aspect of the topic. Certainly and not, the reason why not. is is because you're seeing both sides of the coin and I think when we're listening to a viewership such as our you know lovely viewers and listeners i think it's important for everyone to see the examples that we're talking about because even if it's me sitting here and i'm listening to steve or dustin or whoever our guest is i'm learning something and i hope yeah. that like steve's learning something from Absolutely. one of us and i hope that whoever our guest is and i hope dustin's listening you know like learning something from Absolutely. ourselves and that's what the whole point is and we talk about that all the time but enough of that it's just when when you're the duck on the water, I, I, I think that you should also be kind of like the the fisherman where I, I really like that metaphor too, where you're, you know, casting a line, like trying to do what you're, to the best of your abilities, you're doing what you can do, you're seeing what bites, and if it doesn't bite, then you move on and you're not afraid. Mm -hmm. And you go flying down the lake. And I think with, you know, with a duck, it's just <laughs> it's one of those things where if you're not enjoying the view, I think, it's hard for me, especially with what we're doing, like drinking whiskey, smoking cigars, that's why we do it, because we can slow down for a second. As long as we're sitting here and like the wheels are turning like in our heads about something, as long as we're together and like talking about it, I don't think it's like a, a bad thing. I think most people should strive to do that when they're even in their relaxing state. Don't over exert yourself like thinking about it and don't yeah. give yourself a headache. But don't let off of the steam. It's kind of like the the same thing as people talking always about entrepreneurs and that when they start a business, like they've never worked so hard in their life, and but they're also not working because they love what they do. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. Jimmy Russell speaking on you know Eddie and Jimmy from Wild Turkey. You know, Jimmy will always say in countless videos, and even if you talk to him, he's never worked a day in his life, and he's going on his 65th year of being a master distiller and working at the distillery. Right. So. I look at it as don't allow yourself to always be churning, always thinking of something new, constantly working your ass off because you don't get to enjoy anything. But also on the other hand, don't stop when things are good. That's what I gotta say. I like it. I like it. <clears throat> I like it a lot. Um, I guess for my closing remarks, so I love what you had to say, Steve, uh, both of you guys, really. Um, <clears throat> at the end of the day, you know, we, we did make all great points. You know, I, I try to point out the different sides of the coin because, you know, you, other people may have the same questions, but we also want to have that same conversation to hit as many points as possible. Sure. Um, <clears throat> but you have to keep 
moving forward no matter what. So if you are that duck in the water, you know, everything underneath, you're gonna, you're gonna keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, and try to keep everything above the water the way that you want it to be as your best self. Sure. Because you wanna put your best self forward. Um, just like you said, see. Um, and you know, like we said, you know, don't let the hunter <clears throat> shoot you. But I think to Jake's point, at the same time, the, you have to put yourself in the hunter's shoes too and keep your eye on the prize. Yeah. Because you can keep swimming and keep moving forward and keep your best foot, best self up, but at the end of the day, what what are you focusing on? Yeah. Are you just gonna keep swimming, keep paddling, and just see where you go, where you end up? Or where you know what what's your end goal? What's your what's your prize at the end of the day? And if things get you know, a little rocky, the water gets rough or you know things get rough for you and you have to you know kick a little bit harder you know, reach out to the people around you. Reach out, yeah. talk to someone, even if it is just a vent. Um, you know, I've been doing a lot more, especially at work, because things are just insanely stressful. You know, we've got targets on our back for different, you know, various things. And, you know, so I've been talking to one of my other ASMs, you know, we've just been kind of going back and forth about, you know, frustrations that we have. And, you know, just a lot of times just venting it, and then we problem solve at the same time. We're like, you know, we're frustrated about the same thing. Okay, then how do we fix it? Right. And so being able to do that and, you know, put it out there, a lot of times I can realize the solution or, you know, at least feel a lot better about it after the fact. Say that again, please. Yeah. That's great. I say, you know, usually I either forget the solution or, you know, at least feel a lot better about it after the fact. But who did? I did. Right. Yeah, I, I initiated the conversation because I can, I mean, there's been days, especially the last few weeks where I'm just to the max. I was just up texting my buddy Red, like, dude, this is pissing me the fuck off. Like, just this, that, and the other. He goes, dude, sure. what's going on? Yeah. I'm like, I'll, I'll fill you in when you come in. He'll come in, like, we'll just go to the conference room, shut the door, and I'm just like, dude, seriously. Yeah. Like, it's just, like, I just, I get it out there, like, it's just, it's frustrations, and we talk it out, you know, and, you know, based on the people that we have, and, you know, the, the team. And just, you know, and a lot of it is just knowing and understanding the people that you work with at the same time because they may present more frustrations, but at the end of the day, you got to work together, too. Yeah. So it's, it's getting through all of that and still trying to find that common goal. Sure. So while you may have difficulties with someone that you're friends with, you still got to be able to work through all of that and reach out to them when you have an issue. Yeah. You know, even if it is someone that you're just like, you're butting heads with them, how are you going to fix the issue if you don't address it? I love it. Right? Yeah. So keep moving forward. Keep pedaling no matter how good or bad it may be. You just got to keep trucking. Keep on trucking. Yep. Like keep it. on trucking. <laughs> so so Jake actually noted down something. I, I, I alluded to that a little bit when we were talking about yeah, you know, did. Yeah. And, and, and um, so. I just thought it was so great. Like, no, yeah, I, 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 so, like so Grant was on uh, a, a few episodes ago. And um, I've been following him on social media ever since and I, I, I really enjoyed uh, a lot of his content and his attitude and everything else. He's real man. He's, He's real. And, 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 real. And yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but it, the fact that, you know, one of the things he, you know, I actually, if I recall correctly, I actually brought up talking to the mirror and he, he chimed in saying that's what he does with his clients. That's what I wanted you to speak on because I thought that was interesting. It was interesting that, yeah, I agree because he is is now doing this for a living. I'm not saying he's necessarily a trained professional because he's created a lot, you know what I mean? He's, he's learned a lot, I feel, I feel like, uh, from a lot of different people that he's, he's inspired by, but he, he was, you know, I was talking about the fact that I would recenter sometimes, talking on the phone, walk around the house, if you guys didn't listen to that podcast where I was, I was losing myself emotionally or if I wasn't sure of myself, I would find myself in that front bedroom of the old house where the closet doors were, were mirrored, yeah. and I would be on the phone, and as soon as I caught a glimpse of myself, all of a sudden, I, I recentered myself because I saw the outside. Right. I looked at myself, I gave myself, in, in a sense, more value because I wasn't as just inside myself. It was just like, no, wait, what the fuck? Like, this is me. You know what I mean? It's, it's presenting myself and, and realizing the presentation that you give off. Jake and I had a conversation, I'm not going to get into details, but at some point, you know, last night, it wasn't even a, a negative or a serious conversation. 
but he was, you know, Jake reminded me of the fact that it was like, well, you realize that you are this. And it was, it was, it was an outside aspect that, you know, I, we all forget sometimes, yeah. you know, we, we put so much effort into being that, 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 that top portion of the duck on the water, you know, you, you put all that effort into it. And then when you actually are pulling it off, when you're actually enjoying that, enjoying the effort that you put into presenting yourself from a, from a charismatic way, from a professional way, from a personal way, from a, the way you're dressed, you know what I mean? All that stuff, no matter what it is. You work out all the time. You try to, you try to get yourself to a physical level. And then all of a sudden, it's like when it comes down to it, you're just that, that, that sheltered, you know, adolescent where you're unsure of yourself, and, and all you gotta do is walk in front of a mirror and just realize. Yeah. You know what I mean? We, we all think of ourselves a certain way, and some of it's positive, a lot of it is negative, but I think when you, you have put the effort in, and you've gotten to the point where you look in the mirror, you recenter yourself, you, you appreciate the work you've done, and, and then what, what other people see in you, because they see you on the outside. Mm -hmm. That's a factor that we don't always we always get, you know, and that's that whole thing. I guess I think that's a great tie into to the, the topic tonight of of how how to be a duck on the water. You know, how do you be that 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 calm, collected individual, if you will, and the person that has things put together, where you you present yourself in a manner that sometimes you have to take a step back and and, and have that kind of outside looking in experience where you you enjoy what other people are seeing in you and, and, and take advantage and take appreciation for the uh, the efforts that you put out um, yes <laughs> I'll say this to close it out I think uh, it's been a good conversation I'm smoking a Romeo uh, by San Andreas uh, Ray just asked a question we'll throw a curveball in here what was your original focus may have changed based upon current circumstance but if you if your head is down and you're going hell for leather, you'll miss that. I think it's the same thing as when you're you're that that keep moving forward. If all, but at the same time, if all you're doing is moving forward, you don't take in the scenery. You know my answer. Go ahead. <laughs> and then I'll Do you up. know my answer? No, go ahead. I figured you would, because it. I mean, it gets to the point for me, man. It and. It gets to the point for me with some situations where, you know, I've, I've done all I can do. I've, I've voiced my opinions yeah. and done it respectfully to friends, family. But one thing I've learned in the last, like, year or so is that I'm going to do, like, what I'm going to do, like, hell or high water. So, and, you know, to Ray's point, like, you know, I'm going to... I'm gonna have my head up, but as soon as I've done everything I can do, I'm just making my own waves at that point. There's a metaphor for you. Yeah, but I, yeah, I like that, but I'm, I'm taking Ray's comment where it's like, if you're just pushing forward and it's, it's, I'll say this, if you're pushing forward, you're constantly pushing for your original focus Yeah. and other good things are coming from it, you don't see it. You don't see it because all you're trying to do is, and that was your whole thing about like the entrepreneur thing. It's like all you're doing is pushing, 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 pushing. Yeah. And you know, it's like it's that balance, right? Again, and we'll go back to that. There's a, there's a closing remark. Dustin alluded to it earlier. Is that if all you're doing is is focusing with the hand in the face because that is your priority, that is what you want to do. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's like you just keep pushing forward, pushing forward. I've got this goal. I've got this goal, whatever it might be. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. trying to be there for others. I'm trying to be there for myself. I'm trying to, to make more money. I'm trying to provide for other people. And that's all you do, day in, day out. You just you, you are so focused on that. I think I missed the point of the question. <laughs> no, but in that, all you're doing is, is that you keep moving forward. But at the same time, if you don't move that hand out and have that same goal, you can have the same goal, but also take into consideration that you are succeeding. But that, that was what I was saying earlier, is that even if you are succeeding, if everything's going your way, you still have that hand out in front of your face and the legs are still moving. Yeah. And I think that's the important part for me when I look at this, this whole conversation 
you know, why we're doing this this podcast again. That's that's one of it. We have the Romeo by San Andreas, um, or San Andreas by Romeo by AJ Fernandez. I like the fact that we're doing the all this cigar second mm-hmm. because it had this continued support. Right. We haven't lost the, the the goal of trying to get other people to support us and, and to continue this conversation. Tonight, I will say this is that we absolutely I, I myself showed the, the, the feet moving under the water because when we went on YouTube live we were trying to figure it out. Yeah. So if you started this video, when you come back to this, if you listen to this whole podcast, uh, and you, you check out our YouTube live video, I think we can save it. We don't even know. Right. I assume you can save this as a video for that, yeah. and, and that's what we're hoping. But that's the whole thing, and then we'll share it to Facebook. But we're figuring that out, and that's what you don't want people to see, in my opinion. You, we wanted to do a trial run if we could, but now we're doing it in front of everyone. You saw underneath the water before we got to this point in the podcast. Right. In my opinion. It's great. Yeah. I love it. I like it. I like it too, and I think it makes us very unique, and I think it makes us, I think it differentiates us from all the other podcasts, and we're doing something special here. It's been a great, great episode. Thank you, Dustin Bovey, um, our you know producer and great friend for providing the old Ezra seven year. Get in front of the camera. Yeah, yeah. barrel strength. Yeah. It's good to have you uh, sitting yeah. at the table. Um, and thank you, Tinderbox Deason, for providing the um, Tatawahe. Very cool. Veracu. There it is. Veracu, and thank you all to this cigar company again for providing the San Andreas by Romeo, the AJ Fernandez. He can't do anything wrong, pretty much, <laughs> in the cigar industry. Not yet. Not yet. And uh, we thank you for that, and thank you for the sponsorship, and we look forward to another year with you. Thank you, uh, Via Cigar Company, Brian, Steve. We yeah. cannot wait until the 10 event. There is a new cigar. In new, yeah. There is a new cigar coming out of I'm really pleased about how that all came out yeah yeah so it's pretty exciting and I really really want to feature that cigar in here oh we can do that so um, that look for that in the next up and coming weeks but um, it's great that we had the support that you know that, that we had to come over to YouTube you guys got to see it and everything thank you for Michael again for I really thought that was nice for like a new viewer to share that to like a different bourbon group. We don't know if he's tuned. He, he may have commented. That I know. He might have been on Facebook and I never know. commented. We're not friends with him. I don't think I'm. I've never him, seen his name. So I don't see it pop up. I've never seen his name before. So if I haven't, you've always tuned in. I'm sorry, Michael, but it's, it's great. Thank you for the support. And thanks to the loyal listeners that we've like Ray and, yeah. and, and Kylie and Matt. And I'm not trying to leave anyone out, but you know, Tyler. Um, Diana, like people that we see, Eric Black, you know, like that, yeah. that are loyal Facebook uh, followers. So thank you for following us over here and following those things. Happy birthday, Tyler. That's Happy awesome. Happy birthday, Tyler. Happy birthday, Tyler. We hope everyone has an amazing St. Patrick's Day weekend. Drink responsibly. If you don't, find help, get Uber, something so you get home safe. If you are coming to the, uh, to Easton, for the St. Patrick's Day, right? yeah. if you're coming to Smoking Tent event, if you come to uh, Fado for the Saturday Sunday party, um, there are lift codes. I, I am involved with uh, the Safe Ride nice. uh, for Columbus, and we have ten dollar uh, ten dollars off the lift there and back. So wow. if you need to leave and come back, you can use that same code. So we have that. So uh, Burns Pub also in Columbus, Ohio. For those of the local listeners, if you're on uh, if you're on the Columbia, if you're in the Columbus area, you're going to Easton, you're going to Burns Pub, there are there are some safe ride options. Very good. Yeah. We made it. We're just over two hours. We've been good the last like two it. weeks. I we, like it. We like the new uh, transition. It's great. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. Happy Whiskey Wednesday, episode 58 of the Bourbon and BS podcast. I'm Jake Sanders, along with Steve Crane. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Woo! Justin's not back here, so I gotta go back here. Very good. Very good, yeah. people. Share. Thank you, Thank you.